It is time for what? Collider Live, ladies and gentlemen. It's episode two of Collider Live. We are back after our monumental episode yesterday when shit went down. Collider Live, and we are back here. It is uh, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on Collider Video. What the hell is this show? I don't know. I don't really know. I just know that it's a, it's a fun show that we're going to be doing, talking about, and so far this is our second episode. What's wrong? You got something? I don't want to talk to you yet. I'll introduce you in a second. I can't. Oh, what there is, it is. What no, is this is all I wanted. Yeah, who knows? But yeah, so Riley's just sitting over there, not listening to anything, just worried about his headphones. So I have, a, we got a, we got a smaller crew today, but a, a fun crew at that. Joining me on the table today in, Whoa. The, in the co-host spot is is the wild man, Josh McCougar. Hello, Josh. Say, Christian. How are you, buddy? Did you have a nice uh, day on social media? Uh, yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> really good? It was, uh, I mean... <sighs> We'll get in. Don't get into yeah, it Yeah, no, no, no. It, I will tell you what. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, I thought that it would be a lot more irrational. I really did. Yeah. Uh, but some people Irrational were, or rational? No, irrational. You thought it would be. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. it was, for the most part, it was like kind of rational. I mean, there were some absurdly like funny things that people said that I actually got a big kick out of. Right. Uh, obviously, wrestling fans are very passionate. passionate yeah. And uh, when we get into the discussion, I will... I will Talk about my buddy Ken Napsok, who reached out. Right, yeah. yeah. And, a lot and of people reached out. A lot out. of people reached out. A lot of people reached out. We're going to talk and, about that uh, because yeah. um, Pro Wrestling Sheet is a is a great wrestling site, and it is something that the Collider acquired. We now have Ryan Satin here, yeah. who runs it, and that was the first interaction you guys had yesterday. Ryan. Correct. Never met him before. You know, well, you're going to have a, you're going to get to know him <laughs> a great little. Great meet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a good it it was went, a good bumble day. It's like afterwards, well, that went well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think that you guys will sit down tonight. I think. I yeah. know that you guys are going to sit down today and... We're going to attempt to hash it out. Yeah. We're going to attempt to see yeah. if we can hash it out between mm -hmm. you and Ryan. But joining us on the table also is Mr. Mark Yodi Ryan, the producer of the show. How are you, sir? I'm good, doing well. Thank yeah. you, Christian. Yeah. Happy to be Oh, I get nice my own applause. Yeah. It's yeah, good yeah. to have you on the show today. I love uh, this. This is, feels good. You know, yeah, I yeah. haven't uh, having this guy back in, and uh, this feels old school. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Well, Thanks, speaking buddy. of old school, fans also went nuts because we oh, got yeah. Brett Sheridan back. They love Woo! it. What's up, Brad? How you doing? I'm getting closer to the table. Yeah, a little bit better, <laughs> right? A little closer. Yeah, how was the drive this morning? Was it all right? It was all right. Oh, yeah. I had the kid with me. So <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't no, get a mic No anymore. respect yet, Rod. I got to go in the carpool lane. It went a little faster because I got my son with me. So uh, doing homework so that's in what, the other room. See? So now it makes sense why you're Carpool you lane, so you smart. Here. Yeah. 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 smart. Much better. Uh, a copster, cop flop, and sop, and top top is here. Hey, guys. Nice to see you. <laughs> Thanks, Gobby. Copster's List um, yesterday was a big hit of the show. It was. And it, Shocking, too. People were shocked that Perry Emerald was, was number one. I was shocked at number one. I brought him in yesterday, and yeah. I was like, you better put Christian on your shit list for cooking those burgers yesterday and burning the office <laughs> down. <laughs> listen, was, I don't so, mind. It was so How good was that burger? That burger was good, it was, actually. Okay, yeah, so listen, the, I'm not The judging. taste was very good. There's no I'm venting just, system. I, there really is no venting fault. system. You should put, you should put P, the, our landlord on the shit list. That's very true. We should get an uh, industrial vent for that kid. Yeah, that was either. the biggest burger. burger I've ever seen in my life. It was I, huge. It, he yeah. made a double. Christian had this burger like this. It, I'm a hungry man. I mean, that the was, show I, gets me hungry. The food that he makes here now, and that burger is a good indication. I mean, it's like this big, yeah. and it's just oozing with shit, like good, good shit, shit yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like like sauces and whatnot. Yeah. And then you just you and just walking by. I had to. But can I can I can I bring up a a, a topic? Well, I a, think a you're point. doing that right now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't really ask for permission. No. I know I was gonna do no. it. Do you ever? No. 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 All no, right, no. go ahead. What do you got? Uh, easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Am I right? Well, we're gonna find that out in a little bit <laughs> if that works out. <laughs> okay. Since I've known you, yes, uh, you have. You always go in like. Waves, yeah. you know, like sometimes you're like, I'm gonna jump, I'm just gonna put this whole pizza in my mouth, and then yeah. you're like, you know what I do now? I just eat chicken, half a piece of chicken, <laughs> yeah. a piece of broccoli, and a potato. I'm like, yeah. okay, <laughs> so there's these waves of the right. Christian. So how diets. long is it gonna last? And, right. Well, so but the funny thing is, is when you do go on these diets, you all of a sudden become. Uh, like Tony Horton on P90X, <laughs> you're like, hey, listen, Makuga, what I do is I go to Ralph's, okay, and, and I buy my own diet. meat, okay, and then I kick. And I, I make tell my you own what, meat man, in the yeah, background. I gotta, I gotta tell you what, Makuga, it has really changed everything. And then two weeks later, he's running around schmoe down like full pieces of pizza going and, and in and out burger on my shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jack Hine brings in some right. donuts for his first day of work, yeah. and I go, Christian's gonna have like pieces of donut throughout the day. <laughs> yeah, you like, watch, he's yeah. gonna walk up I to know, that table, eat yeah. a donut. Donut and then not all of it, yeah. but I, I would say no, you, I, you I, hit I, at least one donut by the end of the day. I would from say just three. Pieces. Okay, um, there it is. But I, I stopped because the reason why this it's a it's a different time too. To be completely honest, after I got back, 
you know, when when someone when someone passes away, you know, sure. especially someone as close as my brother, you you re, you rethink things, uh-huh. right? And I had a physical that when I came back on that Monday, yeah. and cholesterol's never been great. Okay. Um, still not good. Well, you're part Italian. Still not good. Italians are cursed with bad cholesterol. It is, but it was that, and it's like you know, there's just stuff that it's like uh, it's not good. Okay. And I and so I got some results back, and I'm like, all right, I know what my buddy John Savaris, who runs that Fuel for Fit, yeah, thing, yeah. Too. Great chef has put me on this great. Uh, you gotta trust before. the man with the last name of Savarese. Savarese. Yeah, yeah, he's in the one. He's the one I told you guys when we were younger looked exactly alike. Oh, okay. Got younger, it, like it. when I, you take a young Kugi, you put him next yeah. to a young Savarese. I sent it to Savarese, yeah. and he was like, "Oh my god, it looks like me." He lost all his hair. I gained all mine on my body. Right, <laughs> right. I think he I, or you gained his too. Yeah, yeah. took all of it. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. um, but yeah. Anyway, so he put me on this great diet, and I got back on it. And it's just, it's really not even necessarily diet. It's just how it's just healthy living. And so I just got to cut out. Cheeses and bread and sugars and all that stuff too, and it's just when you get older, Uh that's what happens. Yeah, I went with him to Ralph's. He's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go to Ralph's. I'm gonna buy my." I thought we were gonna go across the street or something. Yeah, no, Wood Ranch. No, no, he goes to Ralph's and like the whole, "Hey, let's catch." I haven't seen Christian well. Let's catch up. We talk about our fucking cholesterol levels. Yeah, that's that's what you you do. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, We talk about getting the old fingy and the bingy. That's what I not not by each other, but like I told, (laughs) but I told, don't I told? I told. Let's clarify. Collider Live, fingy and the. Fingy and the bingy. Well, after sure. yesterday, we changed the title of the show. Fingy and the bingy. Fingy and the bingy. Hey, we want to get a fingy and the bingy. Oh, hey there. Coming up at eleven o'clock. Uh, oh, nice. So, and we, next with traffic, fingy and the bingy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most popular segment coming up in the Family Channel, fingy and the bings. I just can't wait to tonight at about eleven p.m. He's gonna. I have a bit for fingy and the bingy. Fingy I want to do it tomorrow, and here's yeah. a video to go with it. I have well, to get one that, done, and yeah. I bet you'll make me film it. He'll, 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 he'll we'll bring it. And it It will be Brett. Wait, Beardo, Beardo just said something very monumental, and you guys missed it. Beardo, thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank nice, you. Nice. Uh, Let me ask you. <laughs> all right, <laughs> I'm ready now. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, <they're> ready. <laughs> I'd like. I'd honestly like to get the feeling in the uh, whole room and or outside. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I I don't like Lacroix or Lacroix or I don't however we're saying it. Is it like bad for you? Not at all. That's the whole reason I drink it. Look, Are you sure? Does it have I'm sodium? telling you. No, it does not. Listen, okay. to, listen. It's got no fat, no sodium, no carbs. No protein. It's no got taste. shit. That's, fuck off. It's <laughs> got, but you're just drinking it's soda fine. water. It's fine. Yeah, I like soda water. Okay. But I just I happen to like this. I mean, that's the thing is that people in general, when you like things, people, if they don't understand or like it, yeah. garbage people, then <laughs> they just uh, right away, I don't like the LaCroix. I'm not going to drink but it. That's, it's just, and no, that's no, just no, you. No, no, because I've never been a soda water. I can't do fizzy well, bubbles yeah, and well, things like that. I don't, I drink it not, I don't, like I used to drink Diet Coke all the right. time. And I, I wasn't drinking it for the caffeine. I was drinking it for the bubbles. Yeah, oh, and, okay. and so I, Cut that shit out. That'll make you go ridiculous, and oh, yeah. you know, take shave your brain. So zero away. calories in a Lacroix. Yeah, oh, okay. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it's, it's no sugar in it. But there's a lot of people now that are drinking the La- Lacroix, because and I that, see yeah. it online. They're like, somebody hated it, and then another person liked it, and it's not just in here in the office. This debate, it's raging online. You guys yeah, know people the, get violent about it yeah. too. Man. You know the kind of funny guys, Greg and yeah, Scarpino, yeah, yeah. and oh, yeah. okay. So they, I, I don't know if you guys know the story, but they entered this Lacroix competition, right? Right, and they won. <laughs> Okay. Yo, really? Right, right. They oh, won. Yeah. Did you know the story? You, yeah, yeah, I know I this. You, well, you told me, and, and then when he came in, he told okay, me. Okay, so yeah, he yeah. saw it. Yeah. So I went up uh, to do their show a few months back. I'm going to go up again. That's great. It's, it's They're a blast up there. And I walked in, and there is tarps covering these huge mounds of thing. And I was like, are you guys mulching your deck or something? Right, right. And they're like, no, that's LaCroix. And I was like, what? Right. And then We're I walk in stacks, the office. Stacks. stacks. It's like my apartment. Yeah. Then yeah. I walked in. There's more stacks of LaCroix. One whole storage thing is a wall of LaCroix. Yeah. They got is it like the corner of the studio here? Cases of yeah. LaCroix. Eight hundred. All different. I bought eight hundred cases yesterday at Ralph's. And only guy that drink only guy that drinks it is Tim. Really? See, it was funny because <laughs> when I when I Nick was like, Yeah, just come up to San Francisco, pick up a case, go back home. Yeah. You know, all right. That's, <laughs> that's cool. When I first got there, he said, Did you drive? And I said, No. He's like, Oh, we're trying to yeah. get rid of this LaCroix. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, we got a lot happening on this episode too, and that was the thing. I saw a lot of great responses, and we can get into that in a bit from from the community. People who had missed the Schmoes No Live show before, people who were tuning into Collider Live, a lot of um, thoughts, a lot of questions, a lot of fun criticisms, uh, constructive ones, and there's a lot. There's a lot we're going to talk about in a little bit too. But I also want to let everybody know that this episode of Collider Live is brought to you guys by Rode Microphones. And we love Rode. So many things that we have been doing with Rode mm-hmm. since the days of the Schmoes. And now we have them here on Cloud Alive. And this one is brought to you by Rode Microphones and My Rode Reel. It's the world's largest short film competition. Right now, there are over 1,000 short films battling to win $1 million. It's 
a lot of money and a lot Ooh, of LaCroix. It's a lot of stretch. It's worth uh, $1 million for the prizes, and you can help by voting for your favorite films. There's drama, there's comedy, there's sci-fi, and they're all in there. Head on over to MyRoadReel.com, watch some of the films, and vote now for your favorite. There's a link in the description where you can head on over to the Collider store where you can buy the official Collider Live t-shirt as well. So you got Road Reel, you got Collider Live t-shirt. You and know who's in, in Road Reel? In my, uh, Mr. RB3. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, I saw him. He yeah. took, that's smart. He took advantage of it. Yeah. He, he kept did. promoting it on all the podcasts, yeah. and he makes these films, and he said, you know what? I'm smart getting too. I'm getting myself into this. Smart. Yeah. So I think there are a lot Young of Young and hungry, are. Christian, not old and tired. And, no. it's, and it, did you see what he did? No. It's fantastic. Yeah, movie. He, yeah, it's like a kind of a documentary thing. He, he interviews some artists in, in Venice. Venice. Yeah, like street artists. Beautifully shot. It's like yeah. it, it's got a great narrative. And RB3, man. RB3 is guy. a deep dude, too. Yeah, he's really so to know deep. Him. He really yeah. is when you get to know him. He's a funny dude, and he's but he's... He's got. A, I love that kid. I Me mean, too. he's been he's so been around much. for a long time. He, he called um, me Mr. Makuga for like the three, four, four times. He calls me boss still, and I'm like, you don't, you don't need to do that. <laughs> you don't need to do that. Please don't do that. You know, please don't do that. You don't Very need to polite that. He's Save that for Brett. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Brett, we're gonna do some fun with Brett today. Oh my the fans, god, this the is fans, really the fans are gonna love this. Well, because Beardo got the, uh, the the phone system working pretty yeah. good. I mean, yesterday, Samantha, who was a big hit on yeah, the show yesterday. Super. You called... know how I know she's one of your friends? Because uh-huh. every time I've met one of your friends from New York, their yeah. accents are the same and perfect. Oh, right? Like she's like, like oh, I legit. knew it was. It was it was so good. Yeah. The girl I we like met that in you the... bailed on that because no, that was going to be a disaster. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 yeah. You know me in accents. Yeah, I, know, I, know. I got like one great. accent. It's yeah. Pittsburgh. Uh, but the one girl that we met in the bar when we were Shauna, Shauna, yeah, she's got a great accent. Oh, yeah. I mean, hysterical. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. I mean, it was funny because I was again Die Hard Three. Yeah, you could tell the one lady from who played uh, in Wayne's, Wayne's World One was the, was the wife, and she's been in tons of stuff. She was she was the cop in Die Hard Three. Horrendous, oh, yes. horrendous New York accent. Terrible. I mean, oh, really bad. Then you can tell they were using extras from New York, like real or, or real like locals from New York, because mm-hmm. this one lady comes over and she's like. Hey, Mr. McLean, I got some water over in the park for you. It's just like, oh, wait a minute, that's that's <laughs> that's, that's, that's legit. Yeah. That's legit. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Shauna and Samantha, they all they all sound um, they, they're all legit New Yorkers, and, New York. and we can talk more about that yeah. in a second. But the thing that I wanted to figure out was because this, the sound was so clear on that phone call from Samantha. I was yeah. like, well, you know what we should do? Let's send Brett out to the Burbank 16. Mm-hmm. And let's just go have him interview people. Oh, I thought he was going to just talk on the phone during the movie and see how many people get anger. <laughs> no, I don't want to. That's 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 not a that's not a Brett thing. Brett Brett's going to go and ask people what movies they're going to go see. Okay, and he's going to see why they aren't working. Sure. At, at one o'clock in the afternoon, because there are people over there watching. So mm-hmm. we're going to have Brett Brett on the street, and this makes you nervous. Oh yeah, it's way out of my. I feel like. Trump drinking a bottle of water with this mic. <laughs> it's very heavy, and it's like it's yeah. hard to manage. Didn't like, like you do stand up like... comedy for a while? Oh, no, it's heavy. It's because yeah. it's got that battery I've in, got the, a in the in the carpal thing. tunnel, or no, what's it called? The ten- tennis uh, ten- elbow. Ten- tennis Moron. elbow right now. Mm-hmm. Tinnitus. So I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah, tinnitus is yeah. different. Um, Brett's got all the diseases. I've got. I hate listen. I'm getting yeah. close to having all of them. No, it's way Fingy out of my comfort zone. Yeah, I gotta. Yeah. Bing, I gotta get the bingy in the bingy. Hashtag that, please. Yeah. Please hashtag. Is that my Fingy T-shirt now? The bingy. Jesus, yep. my T-shirt yeah. is gonna. You get your first T-shirt, Fingy in the bingy. I mean, we already have so many T-shirts coming yeah. our way just from one show yesterday. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. great. Brother. Yeah, I don't like. Stop to... scratching yourself. What are you doing? Over I'm there? just nervous about this whole. Yeah, uh, uh, on the street. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I just why? don't. I, I it's out of it's way out of my comfort zone. Good. I don't like approaching people. That's why I love it. Uh, All right, speaking of which, you don't like approaching people. Then here's what I want you to do. <laughs> oh, God, right now, go go next door and see if Frank's in his in his in his editing bay. Do it. Just go do in. It. Let's yeah. check if in he, with if him. If he's in there, you can take the mic. Oh, take the mic. Yeah, yeah, take yeah, the yeah. mic with you. And go see if he's in there and go interview him. See see if he if he likes us. I followed. Look to the crew here to Twitter. Yeah, so they'll give you what we're talking about. So Brett's going to go walk over and go talk to Frank. See my Frank favorite, so are we calling my it Brett now. on the street? Can we get like a pun name in there? I yeah, said we're... Brett at the movies in the in the description. Yeah. But my favorite is when you say things to me and I'm like, I, I better text Brett. Hey. Yeah. And then yeah. his I was response. just seeing how we were doing next door. Oh, are you, is, is he, he in there? Sounding good? Is he in there? Uh, yeah, we're sounding in there. great, you guys. Okay, oh, good. Thank oh, you, good. thank All you. Right, so, uh, how am I doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, do I get Brett, a headset? Brett, why don't you practice on Frank? Because he, he's really excited to be on the be on the show right now. So why don't you practice on him? All right. Oh, yes. So I practice on him like he's at the movie? No. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or ask him what he's doing in no, here. Oh, what are you doing, doing in here, practice. actually? Is, is this something I can look forward to every day? Are we, are we, are we roving now? <laughs> hey, Frank, did you notice it's not that... not contained to just that room? He can't hear Am you. Am I holding the mic close enough? Is the mic not picking up over there? You're, You're fine. fine! You're fine! We can hear you. We, guys, we can hear you. But So, yes. Brett, we're going to test we your interview. Can uh, Ryan's thoughts on this? Yeah, well, okay, let's, get, let's get your... Uh, <laughs>
Can okay. I say this is the first time we've ever met? <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice to meet you, Brett. <laughs> Frank? All right. Brett, this so is going great. Do you have any Brett's questions? Gonna talk right, to see you guys tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay, good. Okay, see you later, Frank. I think he wants me to leave. <laughs> All right, fine. Sounds about right. Frank, nice meeting you, Frank. Frank's going to want to have to have a conversation with yeah. Fernandez. Later. Love you, Frank! Right. He said, th- nice meeting you. Like, uh, get out. Right, yeah. So now he's working. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so we're going to be able to do that. We're going to send Brett around to uh, interview people in general, but he's got to get better. You gotta get better on the. I gotta get better on those interview skills. How about Brett Dead Redemption? No, that's now we'll come up with something. That's pretty but good. It's not that. Um, anyway, it's so, early. So you know, we have warm we, it up. We Brett Sparrow, the uh, uh, the Jennifer Lawrence movie Red Sparrow. Brett. S- no, uh, no, that I one. Brett on the didn't street. Work. Brett, so <laughs> Brett on the street. We have Brett on the street that we're gonna be doing. But the good something I'm very I'm actually excited that we're gonna carry over in the tradition of schmoes. Um, Get out of your head right now and stop thinking about the titles of the segment. <laughs> I'm sorry, real quick. It was so dumb about that. I felt like I was, uh, for some reason, what? I was pretending like I was on camera. I kept looking over to the, like, and, and having him know, look, look to like camera. You're, like you're a bad newsman? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, there's no fucking camera in here. Right, what am right. I doing? Well, you see, you gotta get used to it. This is great. Okay. At least you're looking for the camera. Yeah. You gotta t- that's, hey. a, that's a skill not easily taught. It's a but wait, so, um, Brown the Street will be something, but the other thing, we, we mentioned some of the segments that we did yesterday, and one of the, Hits was Cops Are Shit List, mm-hmm. yeah. which is something we'll definitely bring back again. Mm-hmm. Um, ran into Bibiani last night, and he, he was like, so I guess I have to apologize to cops, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, which please. Was, which please was, do. Please do, which was great. <laughs> um, and then Perry hit the number one. We haven't, we haven't yeah. talked to Perry yet about being number one, how she felt, but Perry will be on this show today mm-hmm. because Perry uh, was going to be conducting an interview with me. We have Chris Weitz, who, you know, from... American Pie, about a boy. He has a new movie that is coming out, and it is called Operation um, Finale. Tumbo Drop. Oh. No, not Operation Finale. Mm. And long time ago, Maku. Gotcha. Yeah, it's and long time. Perry got a chance to sit down to see it, and so she is going to interview him with me. And oh, I have a cool. lot of questions. He also he also wrote Rogue One. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Save the dream. Yeah. yeah, that's my second favorite Star Wars. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. So we get to talk to What's him. What's your about- first? My first Empire. Yeah. Empire. Empire. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got it. Not an idiot. So we're gonna yeah, yeah. sit down and talk to him. <laughs> and um, I've always loved you, Makuga. Thanks. And that'll be cool because um, that that is very cool. That's gonna be cool yeah. to sit down because to have, have him coming in is really cool. Like he's got a great resume. resume. Yeah. Like going in and just about a boy is and, a fantastic and movie. also diverse. I mean, American Pie about American a boy. American Pie. Oh yeah, he, he, that's that's yeah. kind of one of uh, the Twilight so. New Moon. He right. directed that. Well, that, I, it, he, that shattered box office records, obviously. Well, I want to be able to. Then that was the thing that I was talking about yesterday when we talked about the Afterthoughts guys. Is they had men, mentioned at one point like, oh, you know, well, I don't want to see one on one on Caught Alive. Well, tough shit because that's one of the things that I want to do because I can't do one on one as much right. you know with some of the celebrity guests so I want to have them on this show on but this. also I want to see it on this because yeah, the thing but is why is don't they want I think that they just but it's not going to be one on one it's going to be all of us talking to a guest like Schmoes well, yeah, where it's, but yeah. there's going to be some times where I just want to for for a bit dive in and because live some people and look to call it what it is. I, it's people, especially. But you're a terrible interviewer. Why wouldn't you, you want I us all that. in here? Uh, because when you look at when you look at um, oh. Col- no. <laughs> Collider in general, Collider in general, right? Because and this is I think this is for all of us. For straight when across the board. When you when you look at a new thing that's popped up, the audience, for better or for worse, when they see certain whether it's like Star Wars or Marvel, they click on. Mm-hmm. When they see. Celebrity interviews, too, they or they see a link, they don't watch it because, for example, like the Katie Sackhoff interview, the Joe Manganiello interview, some of the best, the Leah Thompson ones, sure, big numbers. Uh, no, they they weren't. That was uh, the thing is that I I love I mean, on, on on the podcast feed they did they did okay and and then on YouTube they did okay. But those interviews, I'll be honest, they should have done a lot better. More people should have seen them always. And it was like and people who did see them liked them a lot. So then I said, well, I, again, yesterday's episode of Clyder Live, it's something like thirty thousand, and we haven't even done the podcast feed mm-hmm. yet, right? I think that the guests that we have on deserve more exposure. So I think the biggest one on ones that that like Snyder, Sinead. Yeah. So I'm gonna stick to doing like, you know, you, Riley, Brett, like those are the ones I'll do one on one will live that way. The sure. celebrity guests will live here. Like when George Takei comes on, right. I want him on. But the thing is, too, and we've talked about this a billion times, is when we first started talking about this show, is that a lot of times there are 
I don't want. I mean, I, I don't want to sl- slight anybody, but celebrities that aren't exactly a list or whatever, right. but want to promote something, and there those interviews will do literally nothing. nothing. We'll have a blast on here. We'll get a little more thing, and we'll get to actually like talk about the movie to people more than one person and learn more about them. Correct. Yeah, because like so, Cooper Barnes, right? Who was on is on a, a show that my daughter loves. Uh, it's Nickelodeon show, yeah. right? Loves it. And he's an interesting dude, like a really interesting dude. No one watched it because yeah. I didn't know who he was. Yeah. And it, and he's a really interesting dude, and like he's someone I'd like to have on here because he's he's really he knows he knows his shit. He knows movies really well. He's funny. Yeah. Um, isn't afraid to just kind of talk his mind. And like I want people to be exposed. You know, people to be able to see them. Yeah. So that's why I would move long. And we have three days. That was the thing that I saw a comment, a couple comments that I got a couple whether it was before we started doing this show or yesterday. There's one comment that came out and it's just like, they, they said, well, I was curious how they're going to do six hours a week, right? Which is a fine comment all in itself. Sure. And then some other guy goes, two is enough. Two <laughs> is enough. <laughs> two. And I'm like, to you, two is enough. It's correct. Yeah. To me, six is enough for me to, uh, there's new things we're talking about all the time here. Yeah, I yeah. get a new ailment every day. <laughs> you do. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, there's, there's True. news that can break. There's, How do you think a know, morning show on the radio happen. does it five days a week? Right, they have they do it. Yeah. It's yes. done. I don't mind if it's if two is enough for the person talking. Like the person, sure. if the person would have commented and said, like, I'm only going to be able to do two a week. I understand. There's so only so much that you can watch, so much you can listen to. But that's the other thing too. I don't think people realize that the podcast feed for this show will be up soon. It just yeah. it, it's just been a little bit of a process. And to give you guys some, some incentive, once it goes live. One of the things that we're going to do here is uh, it should be live very soon. Subscribe to that feed and leave a comment because we're going to be giving away three copies. Cops are stop me if I'm wrong. But You're correct, sir. All right. yep. Three nice copies work, cops, of the Avengers Infinity War Blu-ray. Woo. Yeah, buddy. We're be giving away those. And all you need to do... Snap your fingers. Oh, two seconds. No, nope, is subscribe to the feed, but you have to leave a comment once the feed goes up on mm-hmm. Apple Podcasts. Leave it, and we're going to go through them. Take the three best comments on the channel, and we will then give away three copies of Avengers Infinity War. So make sure like you it. yeah check that out. But talking about movie news. Yeah. Right. What do you got, man? You got some new stuff uh, coming out? Anything you know what? Uh, Brian, Beardo. Oh. No, no, look at you. Breaking, breaking news, guys. News. There's breaking oh, news. It's huge. Okay. Danny so Boyle, huge. Star Wars. Yeah. Off of Bond 25 mm. over creative differences. He Uh-oh. just They just announced from 007 Twitter. Danny Boyle, that was going to do his own version, had an idea for James Bond 25, got Daniel Craig back on. It was this big hullabaloo about who's going to direct, who's going to direct. He finally signs on. He has his uh, train spotting writer. They have this script. He's going to shoot it in November, start shooting in November. He's off. So Danny Boyle, he directed the opening ceremonies. That's his biggest credit, right? (laughs) Yes. But you know, the opening ceremonies, that's where he got the idea for James Bond 25 because oh. he worked with Daniel Craig. God. So he had this idea, he pitched it, it was going all going well. Mm. But th- they're what is this? They're not going to get they're not going to get to uh, a November shoot date maybe? Well, I don't know about that because the studios have enough money to be able to find somebody pushing into production if they have enough that they're going off of. I mean, it's happened before. I mean, look at the stuff that I mean, granted the um Edgar Wright stuff with Ant-Man, they they had that working for a bit, but then once he was gone, right. then they got Peyton Reed on and then even that that went from Adam McKay to Peyton Reed. The transfers and directors happen quick. Yeah. I mean, look at the Ron Howard thing. I mean, I mean, Bad the, Boys for Life has yeah. gone through like sixty-four directors. We still don't. Know yeah, yeah, right. right. And they, and there was a short list leading into this that then Do- uh, Boyle, you know, jumped to the yeah. top. But like Denis Villeneuve was like mentioned a while, but he's off doing doing now. And I'm so. sure some of these directors that were actually a part of the conversation have James Bond pitches or even scripts that have been developed that they can probably put into production. In a relatively decent turnaround. Right. My well, th- my question is because he was going to be writing the script. Do, yeah. Because he's leaving, does that script then blow up and they got to start over? No, that's I mean, the only question I, I have. I would assume not. I say when you when you that's when you hire someone on and you start writing on it, that yeah. th- that's their property, you know. So th- they can do it. I mean, because again, bringing up Ant Man, a lot of the stuff there was a lot of stuff that that Peyton Reed did that had a lot of Edgar Wright stuff in there too. So. Yeah. I, my biggest concern is that Bond just the, the property is he's, like it's like keeps getting fucked up. Like, right. like taboo shit going on with it. Like so, for a while for a long, there was Daniel Craig never going to want to do that's it. That's what again. I'm saying. For a, it just always seemed like he made those just, crazy comments. He's like, I'd, what, I'd rather like yeah. cut glass or cut myself with glass, whatever than it was. Slash it's, my wrist. It's this negotiation shit that you know that normally happens. He's whether, on this announcement too. He's he's saying Daniel Craig with Barbara Broccoli and the the team behind Bond. 
So he's a, a producer on it, and so yeah, he's yeah, yeah. part of this press. Well, release. yeah, because he signed a better deal, so he, yeah. he that he's not an issue anymore. They, they locked him down for like one more movie. We know that. So it's I don't know, it's just something about this late, latest Bond movie. Is like, it, do you, you know, think it's being overshadowed by Mission Impossible because it was so good? Nah, I think I think that, I mean because Mission Impossible has been going on, going on as, as the same amount of time as it, I mean, Bond's been around forever, and you right. look at I what mean, Bond. But even the, like, last the good couple Bonds, of Bonds, but the last Bond was not good, but the one no. before that was fantastic. Yeah, and that was going on the same time around. I they had a Star Trek thing going on. It was like the but with yachts instead of the even. It's like the first one, Casino Royale, great. Right. Quantum Solace, and yeah. Skyfall, great. Awesome. Yeah. Spectre, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's like your diet. Awesome. Yeah. It's true. It goes up and down. Donut. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. I don't know, donut. man. I mean, this whole could thing could be a stinky donut. It, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. It, <laughs> it, but they got to hire somebody quick. Bond Bond is is Teflon, though. Like, yeah. You know, even if the movie sucks. People are going to see it. It's, it you're never going to get to a point where like, I'm sick of Bond. Mm-hmm. It just has that magic. I mean, and they can keep reinventing it like I mean. they did with Daniel Craig and right. Casino Royale. Give it to Idris Elba. I, yeah, I, I want What's Idris going Elba. on with that, though? Because remember, they said Idris Elba had posted that thing. They said, my name's, my name's Id, uh, Elba, Idris Elba. And then... And then he's the, playing know, with the internet. I know he's fucking with people because then so they, this whole thing came out, and then he said, "Don't don't believe the hype." But he's the one who created the hype. Right. Uh, well, no. yes, he he joined in on the the hype. There was that rumor that came from like the Star or something that said, "Yeah, they're actually seriously considering it." And all the the trades and and Justin Kroll, who's a friend of the yeah. show, was like, "Hold on." Hold on, this is what's actually happening. Nobody knows where this came from. Right, uh, they they're in the middle of shooting this thing, or they but, were. Right, so right. there it is. So yeah, they already start shooting it. No, they they were in the. Uh, I should say the starting pre production. Yeah, 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 prepping it. Okay, so uh, so they they have to deal with this creative differences. They're not thinking the, about Idris Elba right the now. The bigger question is, will they hit? What's supposed to be November of next year? Yeah, November two thousand nineteen. I think they'll hit it. Still, That's, they'll find somebody. Yeah, they'll hit it. Yeah, yeah. Do you think yeah. they'll hit it? I don't know. I, again, yeah. it's tied to that script for me. If if Danny Boy was working on the script yeah. and he's out right now, it, it looks like it was starting with that script over okay. creative differences. Bond is such so a fun holiday movie. If they have is, to, yeah. if they have to start rewriting a script, yeah, I could conceivably see it being pushed. Possible. Yeah. All right. What else you got? Uh, Tom Cruise as Hal Jordan. Do you like that? What do you think of Tom well, Cruise? Well, tell me the whole because story. Because it's a very huge rumor, and yeah, our very me. own Jeff Snyder is laughing at this Saying this rumor. not even close. What was, what was Ryan Reynolds' name in the movie? Was it Steve? Hal Jordan. No, Hal Jordan. It was Hal Jordan. It is Hal, yeah, Jordan. Hal Jordan. And isn't there like another Green Lantern name? Yeah, John Stewart. John Stewart. John Stewart. So here's, here's the rumor, which is funny, because it took over the internet, John too. Stewart is black, and Hal yes. Jordan's white. Got it. So... There, there, there's this. What, who is it? It's like uh, doesn't matter. Yeah. Doesn't so matter. these people reporting it, I'll get to it, right. are saying that he wanted to be Hal Jordan in Green Lantern Corps, right. right? And that at the end of the movie, Hal Jordan dies. Okay? okay. Somehow, whatever it is, and so the story goes. Tom Cruise says, "I love it. Don't make him die, and then I'm in." Right. And then the internet starts taking over, and some people were like, "Oh, Tom Cruise yeah, going who, to space! I want to do who, stunts." Who has that kind of access? And who's reporting? Who's not giving that to like the reporter or right. Variety? Who's giving? What is? What site is this? Uh, it is Crazy Days and Nights. Right. Who's uh, giving yeah. them that? Wait, it's like is, the, yeah. the, what the, the Adam Sandler movie? Eight Crazy Nights. Yeah, right. Crazy. I'm gonna look it up. Right. Fan Days site to nights. that movie. I don't know. Let's 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 let's. Do you so, see? But here's the thing: Tom Cruise is a superhero. Listen, I get it. He's already a superhero. Iron Man. He's supposed to be Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of glad that he wasn't, to Me be too. honest with you. I mean, awesome in Mission Impossible. I just don't know if I he's. I don't know if I see him in a superhero role, but that man. I mean, he can always change well, my mind because the well, dude's kind of like he, you said. He's Teflon, he, in my opinion. You would do this on online because the the internet then started using this and goes, "Wait, I can go to space and like jump out and fly through space because Tom Cruise likes to do his stunts." Right, right. And they're like, "No, no, no, we'll get a green screen." He's like, "No, you mean I can go to space <laughs> and fly around?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, we'll get a green." No, you are not hearing me. I am going to space, and you're yeah. like. Tom Cruise wants to do That's his own it. stunt. He's sure. an astronaut. Yeah, I doubt it. Uh, I, I I don't know. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's so many rumors with DC. Obviously, Green Lantern Corps. David Goyer was, uh, I guess, supposed to direct. We don't know was yet. We Goyer haven't heard supposed anything. to do He Man. That What's fell that? through too, right? Yeah, they were going to be doing What's a He Man. That He Man fucking movie. It's just... Apart, don't ever. Right. The first one was perfect. Don't ever. Don't yeah, shit. you can't mess Dude, with the that. first one. Is Fuck not you perfect. Guys. You cannot mess with Again, that film. Yeah. Are you kidding me? That movie is atrocious. <laughs> that movie is fucking awful. It is it's so, so bad. bad. It's not He Man. <laughs> you, you, yeah, exactly. That's why. 
It's oh, Drago. Yeah, That's the Finky and no, no, the no, Baby of movie. <laughs> yeah. He left. He it, left uh, Masters. Yeah. So that 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 movie again. I, I've said it a billion times. I'll say it a billion times over. Masters of the Universe should be done. Star Wars meets Lord of the Rings. It should be uh, treated seriously the same way they did it in the 2002 series on the Cartoon Network. That's how they should treat that Can movie. Call Ethan and just get it back. I mean, we had it. I don't want them to we touch it. it. I, I like. I mean, I love Ethan. Ethan could give, but Joel, Joel Silver would have no fucking idea how to do that movie. Yeah, not no even. idea. He didn't even know what what property is that. So we're gonna oil down <laughs> Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. Oh. yeah, and then he's gonna come back for the sequel. Yeah. Uh, anything else interesting going on in the, in the uh, world? Of news? Yeah, I think, and I think uh, Makuga likes this news. Glow was renewed for season three. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah. I, I have yet to watch Glow. You gotta watch top it. ten show on Netflix. Without it? a doubt. All right. Did yeah. you love it? Loved it. This is Loved hysterical. Two. I know it is, but there's oh, just there's yeah. no wrestling. This is in really it. funny. There is wrestling. There like was a, there this was a, in in if we're looking at hundred percent of the show. There was a full episode in season two where they did all the vignettes. Yeah, but it, there was like ten seconds. It was a full episode of vignettes. The whole thing, the the second to last episode or whatever was was was, was the actual show. No, no, I get it, but there wasn't like. You're, you're you're totally getting away from the point. No, of, I'm not. I'm, I'm leaning into the little point. vignettes of like this and that is fine. It's not. You're not sitting there watching 20 minutes of sweaty men yelling into <laughs> microphones and then throwing themselves against rope. Same move. Same move. Same move. Fake pin. Fake pin. Ref doesn't matter. Fake it's, pin. Fake she, pin. Ref doesn't I'm matter. So sh- pin, you're done. not because it's Preach. women, dude. I'm so shocked by this because it's like when you watch Glow and you understand like Glow to me. Glow to me teaches, is an amazing. Dramedy, yeah, but it with te- fantastic characters and no wrestling. Well, but it teaches you. But what I'm saying, though, it, it really shows how the sausages are made inside of wrestling, and how like when you look at well, who's who's the Alison Brie. Alison Brie. When you look at what she, she to me is the perfect representation of what like a wrestler tries to do, like developing your character, learning your character, selling it to the audience, having them be part. How much their moves mean. How much like yeah, but that's every drama. What it doesn't the, the show does so little wrestling that it appeals but to me. You're making my also, but you're making my point here because I'm saying like if you, if you're, you're you're starting to see the point a little bit because if you look if you look at the what she does <laughs> oh boy oh what, boy what Zoya does what Zoya is in Zoya. that show yeah but like how she has to develop and create Zoya the Destroyer and make this thing because it's entertaining and it's fun because then she has to do something with Liberty Bell and now here's this drama like what's going to sell it to the crowd. That's wrestling. That's what I mean, that that was the '80s wrestling of of the way that they did things. Now, kind of developing it further into it, I we're gonna save a lot of this because the behind the scenes is the most fun part. It's not the actual wrestling, which was what I would every time I would turn on a wrestling, it was bright lights, a ring, a dude screaming in the microphone, and then a bunch of dudes just kind of screaming. And then you showed me these clips yesterday. Yeah, well, wait, let's say, say, let's All wait. Right. Ryan Satin's gonna come just in saying, here. Well, yeah, we season three have... getting renewed. I was is genius, to... and it's the easiest binge on Netflix. Netflix needs to do more 10 episode 30 minute shows that are dramedies because these 13 episode hour long dramas in superhero world exhausting. are exhausting. Oh, they do superhero world in oh because of Daredevil, Daredevil Jessica, Jessica Jones. Jones. Right, right, this last Punisher. season of Luke Cage and Jessica Jones took me months. Really? It is so long. I gave up on those shows. It's they're just so I'm, long. I'm only doing like Daredevil. Daredevil and Punisher. I, well, they haven't done Daredevil in forever. I well, know. I know that. Was but I'm waiting for Defenders was three. shitty, right? Defenders was garbage. No. Yeah, yeah Defender, I started like two episodes and I couldn't do it. I mean, he, I couldn't he, do it. they knew how kind of bad it was. They knew they had money, they had gold yeah. with Punisher. All the other ones are, were kind of being rushed in and you, in these franchises, like Ryan's Jessica coming Jones, in. like Luke Cage. Oh, he's oh, ready. Okay, turn down the mic. Turn down the mic. Turn it down. Oh. All right, let's get Hang Ryan. Out. Let's get Ryan. Let's get Ryan in here. He could have. Ta- he could have turned the, the game down, Cobster. He could have right. had my mic. I wasn't adding anything right. to the last. Let's, ten let's, <laughs> yeah. Is all Cody right. putting like thought bubbles above my yeah. head? While let's I'm do. All right, here we go. So we were just talking about Glow season three. I was listening. Okay, you're so, a fan of the show. I love the show. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Fantastic. so Glow season three, and then that got us into kind of what happened yesterday. So we'll, we'll we'll push aside Glow season three. We agree that it's good that it comes back. Yes. Everyone agree that. It's uh, everybody in uh, Mark Marin deserves an award. He's so amazing so in that show. So, so yes- Betty Gilpin, she's fantastic. Yeah, everybody on that show. Yeah, really Brie good. too. Yesterday on Collider Live, 
we were on the show and we started, and I, I didn't even get a chance to actually give my thoughts on I've SummerSlam. I've never even met Ryan Sen. Wait, wait, wait. So, so I was try, trying to talk about SummerSlam because I was watching a little bit of it. I am, um, for those of you who don't know my background, I, I was a hardcore wrestling fan when I was younger, turned that into an actual job at the WWE as a writer. Uh, after I st- was working there, I n- was no longer a fan, but that was kind of, again, watching the sausages being made. I didn't want to be a part of it anymore. Just stopped watching. Started doing the Schmodown. 2016, started casually watching again. I watched the pay-per-views. I do all that, and I and I keep up, and I'm actually really intrigued with how Ronda Rousey was going to do. I thought, because she's such a tr- horrendous actress, that she was <laughs> not going to be able to deliver in the WWE. Um, she has not yet delivered on her mic skills, but she has delivered in the ring times 10. Um, so I was curious, and I watched it, and I was going to get into that yesterday a bit. And Ellis and Mac- I know Ellis' stance on, on wrestling. He's made it clear to me, but he, he approached it one way. Makuga approached it a different way yesterday. It's, uh, and that's putting it mildly. In, and inside of, and Ryan came in, Ryan Satin, who uh, is, is the creator. Gangbusters. Yeah, well, he's the creator of Pro Wrestling Sheet. Um, great website that I talked about earlier today. We Now it is Collider, Collider now powers. Um, wrestling Sheet, you can find the YouTube channel, you, you can find the, the website itself, and Ryan's on there, Roka's on there, they do a bunch of great shows. Ryan came in here to defend himself, defend wrestling, and the conversation was going good because it was just points happening, and then Makuga, I wish we would have sound clipped this out, but the- I'm sure Beardo can- I'm sure, I, I should have asked him to do it last night, but um, but the the sound clip, and that wasn't it, <laughs> but but it was, it was, Makuga got heated and said, "Yeah, it's just garbage people watching garbage." Yeah, <laughs> everyone, and, and, and it was said. And then I, was, like, I said, under his like, breath uh, too, so and I was just so taken aback. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't even know this guy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just called me a garbage person. Yeah. Right, I want to have so yeah. what? What I said, I said to Makuga afterwards, and I said to Ryan, I said, "Let's try to hash this thing out on the air, and we're going to talk." about each other's points, and we're not going to yell at each other. We're going to let each other talk, and we're going to see if we can see the point of view. Because I said to Makuga, what I would love, where I'd love for this thing to go is I would love for eventually we get to a place where Makuga's got to watch a month full of wrestling. Ugh. And then you know how end much stuff it, is already on my plate? And then yeah. end it, and then end it with going to a, an event. Well, so <laughs> okay, so I've been to three events in my life, all at the old Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I'm saw, talking about now, though. I'm okay, I saw now. Jake the Snake wrestle. I saw nice. Gold Dust. I saw Shawn Michaels. Okay, okay, and it was it was entertaining, you know, for to a certain extent. But before I go, before I do anything, yeah. because I'm not, a, I wasn't exactly a debater in in anything. <laughs> my, more than likely, and everybody knows is I just raise my voice until I get exhausted, and then yeah. I'm like, I'm an idiot. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, I saw Ryan as we were walking in. We shook hands. Uh, I, I honestly, after I said it, I was like, God, I feel bad. A bunch of my good buddies watch wrestling. It's not. It, and then as I was formulating my arguments, I was like, God, all my arguments are going to be easily rebutted by this gentleman. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it, it, it is what I get it back to. It's why I'm scared of things. My brother used to lock me in a basement and like scream at me, right? In like the dark. So I'm scared of scary things, right? That explains a lot. Okay. Right? I'm screaming everything. Yeah. My when I was younger, a couple of my buddies were watching wrestling. I was like, "This is pretty crazy. This is cool." My mom's like, "You know what? That is a trashy, trashy thing. We will not be watching that in this house." Okay. And yeah. I was like, "Okay, so we don't watch that in this house, right?" And so as the years went on, and I became friends with more and more people that watch wrestling, it was honestly, and I get it. I'm a huge Pittsburgh fan, so I'm, I know that must be annoying for people. I'm a a huge fan of Jeopardy. I know that must be annoying for people. So, for my rebuttal. I think I was just in the moment, and I, the people that I watch wrestling are not garbage people, okay? But some of the activities in wrestling, to me, can be considered garbage. The inside of wrestling, but not the people who watch them. Correct. Okay. But uh, you did Ryan reiterate said, yesterday at, that you, after you said it, you didn't take it back. You said, I just want to point out that when they're there watching it... <laughs> They're garbage. <laughs> and then Cobster high-fived him and said, I agree with you. Yeah, Wrestling yeah. fans are garbage. garbage. Yeah, I was watching. True, they yeah. are. All I saw. So, <laughs> so what does the garbage person have to say? So look it. I just want to also state something. I, I could give two shits if people watch wrestling or even like wrestling. I, I don't care about that. It was more the fan shaming thing of like, sure. when I was watching and he mentioned that he was a fan of wrestling and I saw you both groan and, and, and roll your eyes, I was like, oh, that's kind of like shitty. He <laughs> likes wrestling. Which, as wrestling fans, that happens to us always when sure. we tell someone you watch wrestling. So, yeah, I, 
I obviously, you know, it was like a little brother syndrome where like I can make fun of my sibling, but like you can't, you can't make fun correct. of my sibling. Yeah. So like I make fun of wrestling fans all the time. Like we all make fun of each other all the time. So I just want that part to be known that I don't care if all of you watch wrestling. I, I, I it was more the the groaning and also Mark told me to come in here and defend it a little bit but <laughs> but he's my boss so I was like cool but then when you called the uh, wrestling fans garbage people it did strike a chord within me yeah I could see that I, I could see I, that. I do get yeah. I, I, I you know not everyone here knows me very well yet but uh, I do get passionate about certain topics and so yeah I sometimes express my passion via Twitter uh, I probably shouldn't do that yeah all don't the time. do that sorry I'm sorry Cobster my <laughs> apologies true to your brand though dude you came in I thought you were gonna swing it yeah. chair yeah. into yeah. Makuga's face. Yeah, I right. saw it coming. And you came coming. in, I was like, uh, oh, shit. Well, but, but and look, it was great. But again, the other thing is to, to realize is that Collider is in the wrestling business. Mm-hmm. And so, and it is good that the guy who runs the wrestling side of things came in to defend it, as he should have. And, and, go ahead. and also, I want to say, look, I understand, like I said, that not everyone's going to watch wrestling, but I have no problem defending that wrestling is the greatest form of entertainment that exists. Like, I, it is... So much fun. Like, I get that, you know, people think that it's trashy or or whatever. Because, you know, let's be honest. It comes from a carnival-like setting. It it can be deemed that way, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But, man, when it's good, it's good. You know, I hear you guys talking about wrestling fans where you almost... It seems to me when you talk about wrestling wrestling fans that you feel like most wrestling fans think that it's real. And I'm going to say this. 90% of wrestling fans over the age of 10 don't think wrestling is real, (laughs) you know? It's similar to watching, like, a reality show. you know what it is? And I think that, to be fair to him, because, like, Talking about the references where he was making, right? Like when you're seeing Jake the Snake, that time wrestling wanted you to make it seem like it was real and that it was a real sport. And that, and that, that was to me why I think Vince McMahon was brilliant by saying it's sports entertainment because you can only convince so many people or try to convince them that it's real when it's and stay, you had to stay one way. It was when he went to sports entertainment that he could start doing all this more grandiose, bizarre shit and be like, oh, well, it's just a TV show now. And I think that that's where it got better and that's why it went more worldwide and more global. But my thing with Makuga, the difference between Makuga and Ellis, and this is because I know them so well and I've, I've been working with them now for years. Ellis is coming from that traditional sports thing. Ellis He'll is never, Stonehenge. He's Stonehenge. He, will he doesn't n- move. He will never change his opinion because... It's also mysterious. Because of what, what makes up wrestling, Ellis could never get on board with. However, he's being a stubborn motherfucker. Yeah, because I can, I, can, I can tell you right now, I know him, if we bring him to an event and he watch for a little bit, if you made him watch one particular storyline, because you can't watch all the shows, if you, if you said, follow this storyline... Josh McCuga would get into a storyline. I know him. I mean, it's the same way that he's able to get into Schmodown storyline and do this too. And Aaron Turner, we know well. I mean, we're the most WWE team in ever. The, in the, You're the Bushwhackers. You called yeah. yourself the Mega Powers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and, I, people were well, sending well, me. But I didn't even Aaron, know what that was. Well, no, he, until, didn't, he didn't. Yeah, know. I didn't know. But I don't how, know any of this. However, however, what he did know, and Aaron Turner brought this up. He, Aaron Turner posted a picture in the Schmoville group today, and he goes, nice merch, bro. And it's Wild Man, but it's in the Hulk Hogan design. And, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. so, like... It's literally like Elvis saying, like, I never heard of blues. Like, I'm only taking the good part of blues. Like, of course he took from people that... Did that. Like, right. it's literally, you guys are taking things from wrestling. And yesterday you said that. You said, uh, we just took the best parts of wrestling and applied it, and that's good, because this is something that isn't scripted. And it's like... What? Like, that doesn't make any sense. What do you got, Riley? Well, the chat uh, yesterday was overwhelmingly in your favor. Yeah, uh, no, sure, Obviously, sure. with the uh, wrestling yeah, fans today? are garbage. Uh, today, you lost them with greatest form of entertainment <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the chat immediately went the other well, way, right. uh, as uh, the internet but, tends to do. But that again... <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. As a person who loves and lives for wrestling, right? Yeah. This gentleman right here, Ryan Sat. <laughs> Has has dedicated his life right. to to wrestling and the love of wrestling and everything. He of course is going to say something absurd like it is the <laughs> best form of entertainment. Right, right. But because he has such passion behind it, right? Like I'm going to go and I'm going to I will put anything on the line to say that the Steelers are the greatest football organization ever put on a football right. field. Right? right. What's your favorite TV show? What's my favorite TV all show? All time. All time. Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Favorite TV show of all time. Correct. Why? Just always makes me laugh whenever I watch it. Okay, so picture if you had Seinfeld, twenty four seven. Like yeah. you, like, like this is literally a, a, a soap opera that never ends. Mm-hmm. There was a pay per view this weekend that was six 
hours long. Six now, hours. To you, that sounds excruciating. Yeah, that sounds But to brutal. you, that's heaven. Well, not always. <laughs> but this, but, but, but WrestleMania. This, but WrestleMania is. Not always, but but this one was. <laughs> WrestleMania fucking five or four yes, or but, three. But those weren't six hours long, though, either. They're three and a half. They're three, usually, is like that. So it, it, right. has, it has gotten a lot longer. But, but, but all I'm saying is I have this... Show. That I mean, I the Super watch. Cause, Bowl, cause when I, you look at it, is about five and a half hours right. long. Exactly. Right. Halftime show. And I don't, you know, I, I don't look at it as a sport. No offense to anyone. What they do is very athletic. But to me, this is my favorite television show to watch. Like, okay. wrestling is my, indie wrestling is a little bit different. But WWE, TNA, all this, my favorite television show to watch. Okay. And so I get this television show Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, yeah, at, at Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then other things are on the weekend and stuff. Right. But that's like, 10 hours of my favorite show that I get all week. And look at not all of it is good. A lot of it <laughs> is really bad. Right. But when it's good, that's yeah, when it's the greatest form of entertainment. Good. What's this TNA? The TNA is another well, one. Well, they're called Impact now, but it's, an, it's another company. But anyway, so look, so what, good, what we've changed. determined here is that, and I think, I think we've hashed this out. Sure. And I think that again, I'd I like to think that Ryan can be my friend. And yeah, I, and I and I think so too. And I think that we maybe can live in garbage it, together. Yeah, yeah. And maybe he'll follow you on Twitter now. Yeah. Uh, not yet. That's debatable. He's got to still learn. All right. So what I would say a lot here of Jeopardy is, tweets. Yeah, a lot of Jeopardy. I, I love Jeopardy. We okay. definitely didn't get him on board. I, I yet. will say before we the show started today, as I was in my car, my phone buzzed, and it was a tweet from Ryan, and it was a picture of Alex Trebek at WrestleMania Seven, and oh, I was like, oh, oh, argument oh. one. It's really good. I, I knew one. that was going to be a killer right, right. there. Yeah. Well, Ryan, listen, man. Uh, thank you for joining us for this segment here too. Check out Ryan. On pro wrestling, she the handshake is made. The mega powers are formed. Um, and, and I will say, a great video would be Satin and I actually wrestling. Well, what I'm well, I want to have you guys. Oh. Do, no, you guys didn't need to do a schmo down. Oh yeah, that's what needs to happen. That sounds good to me. Actually wrestling, not fake wrestling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and then like what Greco we'll do? Roman, yeah, floor, we'll, yeah. singlets, everything. In singlet, yeah. We'll keep working on it, and we'll get Makuga to. We'll figure out which program him to watch, and then we'll get him. We'll tape him, bring some cameras, and get him to go to like a uh, Raw or something. I, I love. I love All to right. make it happen. Ryan Satin, everybody. Ryan right. Satin is here. Make sure you follow yeah, Ryan on Twitter, and then check him out on a pro. Get that sheet. garbage out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, isn't that your job? Are you the doorman? Oh shit! Yeah, and, see, and let's, see how. Let's lock, do me a favor though. Lock that door. <laughs> I mean, because, because here's what I want to do. I want either one of the producers or somebody else or the or the PA to walk people in. I want people just because I was in the middle of, of doing something here with the uh, with, with getting into glow, and mm. then we just had to start the segment. So let's let's have people either get walked in right. or or something along. We'll those do that on the pre. No, I I told Ryan to come in. Well, thank you for doing it in the middle of the bit. All right, yeah, here we go. All right, let's. Bit. That was Jesus, Riley. We were at kind of end of it. Not yet. But you um, see, but you see how how I've matured as far as I thought that was a, I thought I thought that was something that you did that you sat about you thought about it and you're like I, maybe I shouldn't have called yeah. people and it was it was pretty boring so maybe <laughs> maybe you, you thought have, it was going to come in yeah, yeah. yeah. No. all asleep I'm like here. oh and we're no. all better well, well, I'm glad you didn't it wasn't it's, manufactured it's it was way easier to like spread kindness and listen to people right. and create boring content than it is to scream in microphones and ruin everybody's day no because and I, then have to apologize on Twitter for four yeah. years I think you proved my point though where there was like you your stance yesterday I think was a little bit more of you going hey 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 kind of throwing your hands up and just making because it was funny and and getting heated up and throwing stuff out there as opposed to how much you really believed it. I think you believed around 60% of it as opposed to the 100 that you were that you were well, selling yesterday. Like I said earlier in the show it's way easier to ask permission than forgiveness or forgiveness than permission whatever, whatever it is we got it. You get it. Uh, is that you know me? I like to fire off at the mouth sometimes, yeah. and then eventually start thinking about what I said, and I'm like, well, you know, I was okay. Was bunch of, well, all right, well, let me put it. And then I started like writing things down as a, as as a good person that wants to get an argument across right. would do. Uh, as like, okay, let's put TV versus wrestling. Well, you know, it's a script. Uh, no script. Well, I mean, there's no fight. Yeah, there's fighting. It does. Re- yeah, there's fight. right. like everything that so I was trying. I was we rebutting myself, right. and I was like, That's I'm fair. never going to win this argument. And so. that is why. You and I are friends because, like, no, no, I'm serious because you can, like, because I think that to me, it's like when you'll be able to listen to people and be able to come it, when you can't hear people's points and you come back, even though you know, you know that you're wrong mm-hmm. and you still, that's when you become an idiot. <laughs> and it's, it, it really true. is true. So, I want to thank Ryan for coming in here too. Now, before we're going to have Chris White's in a little bit, and Perry Nemiroff is going to join us, and we will be doing an interview there talking about Chris's new movie, Operation Finale. And as well as other stuff that he did in his career. But before we do that, 
I was browsing around on the internet, and I, you know, the internet, you see some fucked up shit. You um, love, I, I will say yeah, this. Fight videos? You love, fight videos? Yeah. You love internet videos more than 99.99% of the population. Because you're like, yo, yo, come here, look at this. Half come the views this. are yeah. from him. Yeah. It's, it's probably Between true. 10 yeah. and yeah. midnight, I but think. I'm telling you, though. Did you see and, this kid on a bike get punched yeah. by a big guy with <laughs> boxing gloves? I'm like, yep. no, but I'll watch it. Yeah, of course, when you watch it. Because the yeah. thing is, Mark Andreco posts great videos. Okay. He posts great stuff. Like I found I I would say 90% of the stuff I find is yeah. Mark Andreco's Facebook page. Um but if it's not hating on Trump, it's funny videos. It's yeah. funny videos. Yeah, but this is something like so this was this is there are some dummies. There are some dummies in the world. And I mean dummies. Yeah. Like so this guy is a preacher in Kentucky, right? And so he uh he, his dad died from <laughs> <laughs> he was a preacher also yeah. and got... Well, you, you should preface this by saying there there is a certain sect of religion that worships a rattlesnake-holding preacher from yeah. back in the day. Y- yes. and It was fo- it was featured on an episode of Justified or a right. storyline. And his Justified. dad was a preacher who <laughs> held snakes, and he got bit and he died. Yeah. <laughs> so what does the son do? He fucking holds snakes again. <laughs> My dad almost drowned after he got back from Vietnam. I stay the fuck out of the water. <laughs> yeah, you know? Right. It's like, and, like, it's... And, and so... This guy now, he's like, no, God's going to protect me. <laughs> and now I'm going to put this rattlesnake on my head yeah, yeah. as a hat or whatever yeah. he's got. And play the clip. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It, where, are you playing? Okay, oh, they're, they're there playing the clip. Okay, there so, is. so this is the guy. This is a, so he says, a sign, and it, so look, so he's, he's holding the snake. And he's, just, and he's dancing around like an imbecile, With right? a snake. Yeah, yeah. And by he, the by, if you play watch, a golf look, course... he's screaming, and the snake's scared out of his fucking mind. <laughs> right? And he's looking at you know, You know what, guy? You're going know, to scream in my ear? You know, you know fuck you. And he bites him yeah. on the head. Yeah. And the guy, and like, watch, watch, watch. He hits him. He gets him right on the... I will say... Watch, watch, watch. The guys look, look, look at the move. Bam! Boom. 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 That little bite, right? And now, so he, he, he cut him up. Sprayed but with dude, blood. But That's what, what I'm saying. But now, but now he thinks he's a badass, right? He's like, oh, I got bit by a snake, and, I, and now this poison ain't going to fuck with me. Oh, man. And so now everyone's like... These two guys these are guys. like, oh, God. All right. Now, watch me. Now, look. So now, this, now talk about the dude's dad. Coots. Who also got taken out dude. by the snake. Old Jamie Coots. And, How could a guy named Coot do something yeah, ridiculous? But, well, now watch. Now watch. He's still dancing around, he's, doing his dance. Oh, my God. He tries blood. Yeah, he oh, tries yeah. to... Now look. Oh, he's now he's like, oh, fuck. shit. Shit's going... Now, now yeah. look. And now he's fucked up. This is this is literally me at a wedding. It's, Super it's sweaty, kids, screaming. It's like... Then falling. No blood, usually. But my pants are usually ripped. Was it Satan a snake, too? Satan I, was uh, a snake. Yeah, I look at you. But look. I mean, look. He got... It's like... Please don't do like don't do this again. Stop doing this. Okay, when you play golf in Southern California or anywhere yeah. in the desert, every, or anywhere you go in the desert, right. anything that says yeah, like take this environmental a area, mess. yeah, he's puking. Take off my tie. Yeah, yeah that's gonna help. It looked yeah. like you after reading all the tweets yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's yeah. really going at it. Yeah. <laughs> anywhere you go that says like environmentally protected area, do not go in rattlesnakes. You know what I do? I don't go in there. Right. Okay. That's it's they're dangerous animals, and mm. no one's gonna protect you. They're gonna bite your face. <laughs> um, Darwinism. That's yeah, what it is. It is. Uh, and then, then last night, last night I found a gem. Oh no! This I found this one. You didn't see this uh, one. Uh, uh, uh. This one is awesome. So look okay. at this. Look at this monkey sitting on the bike. He says, "Piss." <laughs> he's pissing on the. He's pissing on the bike. <laughs> this has got to be in like the Philippines or something. I don't know where it is, but he's but he's he's pissing on the bike, and the guy and, and the guy just parks his <laughs> bike, and I'm screaming. He's like, "Get off my bike! Stop pissing on my bike!" <laughs> And look, you're yelling at him. The monkey, like, no, it's I'm not. I'm Asian not. language. He's like, I'm not leaving. It sounds like he's laughing. Well, well not the yeah. monkey. Well, the, guy, the guy with the his phone. Buddies are, watch, his buddy starts cracking up. Watch what happens. It's a nice looking bike, too. So look, look. So he's sitting there, and then watch the dude. The dude's like, all right, how am I going to get this monkey off my bike? Hey, monkey, get off the bike. Right. It's not working. So oh, that's, his, that's his voice. So he's got a shoe in his hand, right? It's a chocolate. Oh, so he's got the shoe. The guy, now he's, look, throws it out. Look at the monkey. Fuck you. Oh, get out of here. Now watch this. Watch. Now watch. Now they go out. Look, this strap. <laughs> This scrap, look, 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 he's throw, they're throwing punches at each other, dude. Yeah, that's the, not nice. The monkey, the monkey, okay, so guy kicks oh, at him, look, oh, look, the monkey jumps back at him, and look, look, this monkey's not fucking around, he jumps at him, watch this leap. Look at this, watch this, boom! Oh, got the monkey, him. The monkey fucks him up. My favorite thing ever is when you said, that monkey fucking beat his ass. The monkey this beat This morning, him. you're like, that, that monkey won the fight. That monkey won the I fight. I think the monkey won the fight. Monkey easily won the, the fight. Monkey won the, fight. The, monkey, the monkey was looking for some shit. The monkey don't was, fight monkeys, people! Well, yeah. First of all, the guy was, tra- I don't think he was planning to fight the monkey. He threw it to get him off the bike, <laughs> yeah. hoping the monkey would run away. And the monkey said, well, I'm, I'm going to beat your ass. And the, the monkey came out. Monkey fucked him up. 
Just just so we're uh, for the podcast listeners going forward, if you guys want to search those videos, just look up monkey motorcycle fight. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's monkey called. motorcycle fight. But like, what a bizarre fight. Yeah. It's like, have you ever heard of a monkey charging? Like that monkey, that's like, everybody had the dude, the friend at the bar that was like, was just looking for some shit. Yep. And like, so that, because that monkey was looking for some shit. He's like, yeah, this is your bike? Yeah. Cool. That, that, mon- you yeah, lo- that monkey uh, just you came lo- from you, lo- you love this bike? I'm gonna sit on your bike. I guess what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna shit on your bike. I was like, well, how are you gonna get me off? Are you gonna throw your shit? Okay, great. You're gonna <laughs> shoot? Go, now I'm gonna go. fuck you up. Yep. Yeah. 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 That was great. I love that monkey. My favorite thing now, I guess, about this show is waking up to this video. To, because, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's great. It, it, I woke up and you're know, like, add this. I'm like, I'll monkey be, fights a guy with, oh, geez. I'll be in bed, you know, scrolling through Instagram or Twitter or whatever, and a video will come on. And the first, I start giggling, and the first two people I think of are, do I show this to Amanda or do I text it to Hartline? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we <laughs> have that thing that, like, the 30 second fights or whatever oh, that, that was. was like, when we, Twitter, when I first they took started, that Twitter down, yeah, it's they not took up it anymore. Down. Yeah, because they were getting sued, like, every were they? week. Oh, yeah. Well, the end of yeah. Fail Army. Do you know Fail Army? Fail yeah, Army. I mean, I just, I love people falling. It is fun. Well, guys, that was the hour one of Collider Live. Make sure, by the way, I didn't, I didn't. And, uh, tell you guys to do this. Hashtag Collider Live. Yesterday, you guys got us trending just for doing that. Yeah. Collider Live. And, and the, the crews let me know one more time that you guys can get the Collider Live t shirt. Just go to bonfire.com slash store slash collider and get the Collider Live t shirt. It's only been available for around two or three weeks, I believe. So you can only get it for that limited time. So go it's and great get looking that. Too. I love it. It's great. Brian Ward did the art again. So check that out. It's a genius. But hashtag Collider Live. Get us twen- twending? Get us trending one 20. more time. Again. Now that's going to twin. Yeah, and I want to hear about what you guys think. What, what video did you like better? Did you like the snake video better or did you like the monkey video better? Clearly the monkey the fighting monkey fight dude. Is the dude. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Do you think the monkey won the fight? All right. When we get back, we have Chris Weitz in here talk about his brand new movie, Operation Finale, with Perry Nemiroff. I'll we'll talk about her being number one on the shit list after the break. Cody here, cops are behind the camera. And uh, we just got sent this thing, that was his hand. We just got sent this uh, this cake here from Ash vs. Evil Dead. Mm. Got a nice little note. Yeah. Inside here, I believe we have a Blu-ray, Ooh. season three. That wasn't planned, that nice. was Nice, nope, there. just kind of no. fell right through, it's kind of nice. All right. And let's check out what's inside the box here, guys. Here what's in go. the box? Oh, there's a hand. Ooh. There's a hand, hand and a chainsaw, chainsaw. Uh, and nice little writing you know, he here. He went out nobly, I don't know, I don't think he died at the end, but you know what, he, you went, know, out, he went out more. They're really yeah. emphasizing yeah. that that death. You want to take a bite? Okay, I'm, not, uh, I'm a little it's scared very too. early. Yeah, it's early in the morning. Okay. Oh God, do we even have forks? You got a chainsaw, dude. I want to. Oh God, no. The chainsaw okay. is a cake. I wanted to pick it up. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not okay. Doing that. Let's cut where we have forks. All right, so Roka, yeah. uh, clearly a Rams fan. We're gonna uh, yeah. be uh... and a massive Ash versus okay. Evil. Okay, all right. Fan. Okay, that's even better. Yeah. That's what I like to hear. You're gonna try this cake here. Soon. I am. I, yeah, it's a weird cake because it's like it still counts as a cake, I guess, because it's on a pla- some sort of sheet. Okay. But... And you can eat the sheet too. I, uh, yeah, you can eat the sheet. All right, you're gonna go for the hand. That's uh, interesting. Just I, a little I thought piece. You, oh. That looks awesome. I like the goriness of the oh, bone. Oh, is it a velvet? Oh, it looks cake. like a red velvet. Red velvet? Yeah. Logically. Get the bone in there. <laughs> Get a nice. little bit of the bone. Is that, is, that, is that bone and marshmallow? Ooh, oh, I it think is? so. Oh, oh, easy oh, there. Easy. That's his hand. Easy, man. I'm getting a little too excited. <laughs> oh, my God. That looks like real skin. I'm pretty sure that is. Oh, so there's a little thing underneath here. That's oh, why I got it. Okay. I thought it was a piece of the thing. Okay. All right, let's let's give it a little taste. All right. Let's well, do let's one of those. Like I'm going to take a piece let's of the Let's do a McMong. You know what a McMong is? I don't, you can't even cut the chainsaw. I think you can. What's that? What it was? What? McFunk. It's where you just eat in front of a camera. Okay. A lot of food. Now let's try it out. Not too shabby. Oh. Not too shabby. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for giving me a hand. (laughs) 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 We're having fun. We're having fun. Thank you, Azure Evil Dead. August 21st. Get the Blu-ray. Tell them. Get, tell them to get the Blu-ray. Get the Blu-ray. I'll get your hand cut off. That's how it works. Like, that's not going to Hey everyone, I'm Scott Movie Manson. Just to let you know, if you already don't, every Friday here on Collider Video, I host a weekly film review series called Movie Review Talk. The title says it all. Every week I'm joined 
by two guest critics of my choice, and they're never the same. We review the new films. We pick something that's streaming that you might not know about, but is really great. And we pick a Blu-ray for something that you might have missed in theaters. It is fun. It is infectious. It is the Citizen Kane of movie review shows, and it's only right here on Collider with this guy, Scott Movie Mance, Mr. Movie Release Dates himself. Check it out every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, only on Collider Video. Welcome, Collider fans. In time, you will call me Master. And you should check out Rule of Two. That's right, the podcast I do on the Collider Jedi Council podcast feed. Myself and Mark Fernandez every week, dropping on Wednesdays, talk about Star Wars, debate Star Wars, sequels versus prequels, the golden lightsabers, the best of Star Wars. It's a celebration of Star Wars as we know it, and you can join me and Mark Fernandez on the Collider Jedi Council podcast feed every Wednesday. Check it there, and don't use a force. Come to the dark side. All right, we're back. It's Collider Live. It's the second episode. We're hashtagging Collider Live. We're doing it all, and we still don't know who won that fight between that monkey and the motorcycle guy, we're going to have to find out at the end. We put the poll up, and I still think the monkey won the fight. Um, joining us today, first in the co-host seat, because I want to get to our very special guest in a moment here, Perry Nemiroff, fresh off being number one on Cops or Shit List. How are you feeling? Ooh. We have to talk about that. Yeah. Because do you know who my position on the shit list should really go to? Copster? I'm looking at him right now. What did I do? <laughs> what did the I reason do? I'm on Copster's shit list yeah. is because you gave me a particular date for a certain event, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, can we do it tomorrow? And I said, I had work to do. Yeah, well, that's not on me. All right, but you know what is on me is the fact that we have a very special guest here, too. <laughs> and when you go over this gentleman's credits, it's just it's mind blowing, whether it's about a boy, yeah. Merrick Pie, and your latest film here, Operation Finale. Thank Chris you. Weitz is here. Hello, Chris. How are you? Uh, I'm pretty well. Thank you. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Oh, ooh. oh, see, that got everybody going. Yeah, is it, we got them excited. Well, everybody. and the one thing, so Josh McCougar over there is his second favorite, second favorite Star Wars movie of all time is Rogue One. Oh, I love that movie. Uh, thank you. First favorite, I'm sure, is Phantom Menace. <laughs> 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 it's a tie with uh, all three prequels. The all three prequels, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, so, I love Rogue One. Oh, Huge thanks, fan. Man. Yeah, yeah thank so you. Um, and there's a lot of things I wanted to talk to you about, but Perry, let's talk a little bit about Operation Finale here. Oh, my. Um, I have so many questions about how this came together because, yeah. you know, a, a big reason why the story isn't out there in the public, a very important story, is because a lot of the information is classified. Mm -hmm. So I know you didn't write the script, but you did some work when you came in mm -hmm. originally. So how much of what we see on screen in this movie is factual, proven based on testimonial or whatever you found versus, you know... Creatively, where you had to fill in the blanks. Crap that we made up. Um, <laughs> it's, um, is that a technical term? The yeah. ratio of, of crap that we made up to real stuff is very very small. So we actually, we actually even had a, an ex-Massad Asian advisor, oh. uh, who was the guy who, who put together the traveling exhibition about uh, Operation Finale, which was, uh, I'm sure everybody out there knows, because it's the most famous story in the world. But uh, the Mossad in 1960 discovered that Adolf Eichmann, who was a war criminal, uh, the guy who organized the... Uh, the final solution was uh, hiding in Buenos Aires. They sent in a team to uh, extract him, uh, kidnapped him, took him out to took him back to Jerusalem for trial. And uh, it was really the first time that uh, eyewitness testimony of the Holocaust was ever seen in that trial. Um, and so, uh, but the the cool thing is that some of the more uh, bizarre things that happened uh, that happened in the movie are actually true. Like for instance, uh, Eichmann was found because his son Klaus. Um, started dating a girl who didn't know that she was Jewish, <clears throat> and she, <laughs> she'd been raised Catholic. Uh, she brought him home to meet her dad, who was a blind concentration camp survivor, wow. uh, who realized uh, during dinner that uh, this guy was the son of this mass murderer. Um, so we always had uh, Avner uh, on set with us, um, a very funny guy who was happy to point out any mistake we ever made <laughs> Um, down to you know the pattern on blankets and things. Um, so that was uh, both uh, 
at times annoying, but uh, <laughs> uh, but mostly essential. You have you have a um, I mean again just going over your resume too. There's so many different types of movies that yeah. you do. So was this something just kind of very dear to you? You knew about the story. You had to direct this. Uh, so uh, it kind of was. I mean, you know. It, it, American Pie. I, I never went. To, I didn't go to college and I didn't go to high school in in America. I, I didn't have uh, a prom. That stuff was really kind of alien to me. I went to high school in England. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, like a- English public school with um, with uh, beatings and um, drinking and things like that. <laughs> but um, uh, but I did grow up knowing a lot about the Holocaust because my dad was a uh, was a refugee who eventually joined the U.S. Army and, and, and fought in the war. He, he was in the OSS, which is like the precursor to the CIA. Yeah. And he wrote books about uh, prominent Nazi party members. Uh, and I helped him with those books. So this stuff was like yeah, so bread and butter of my growing right. up. So you knew a lot about it, too. Like, again, just because of things that you'd done in the past, it's not mm-hmm. like it's, it's, a, it's a switch. But it, again, you can tell from just hearing you talk about it, too, that this is something that you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And how long were you involved uh, r- right off the bat here? Or? Well, it cu- no, it was a couple of years from, from beginning to end f- for me on the project. Uh, Matt Orton, uh, the, this young uh, English writer, came up with it. I was sent the script and uh, uh, jumped on it. Okay. What about working with Ben Kingsley on this? I mean, especially when you pair Ben Kingsley and Oscar Isaac, there's a lot of things that stand out in the movie, but you've got a right. couple of scenes that are just these these two incredible heavyweights, one mm-hmm. who's been around and is basically an icon, and this other one who has kind of solidified himself as one of the best of the best in the industry mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. Do the two of them just jive right off the bat, or do you kind of, as the director, have to coach them into it? No, I think they, they got along really well from, from, the, from the get-go. They, they went out and got got drunk together um, when <laughs> Sir Ben arrived. And then, then he said, and by the way, notice that I can't say Ben Kingsley. I can only say Sir Ben because I've trained myself to do that. Wow. I need to train um, myself to do yeah. that clearly. No, 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 you don't have to. It's okay. Yeah, well, I, you, I won't report go, you. Barry. Listen, I think, though, if you, if you, earn, if you earn Sir, yeah, you, you want to make people oh, say use the sir. Yeah, I would walk around in spurs with a sword. If I was called <laughs> Sir, I'd be like, yeah. That's, that's, that's um, the truth. Yeah, you get Sir. It's like, you better call me horse. Sir. Yeah, I earned on. this title. Yeah. I earned it. Um, he's an acting knight. And yeah. um, uh, so uh, they, they have two different styles, definitely. You know, Oscar is, is quite flexible, and you can sort of change uh, dialogue on the fly with him, and he's interested in working scenes. And and Sir Ben is just like, he's there from from the, the first moment. I think that actually worked well for them together he kind of sir ben showed up at the at the table read which is when people are still just kind of like possibly reading the script for the first time sometimes <laughs> um and he had all of his it was off book he had all yeah. his lines memorized right um and when he arrived on set too we'd been kind of joshing around with each other for about a week that the, the massad guys and 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 me um and he got on set and it's kind of it was a it was chilly when he was first there because he had no desire to um, like high five uh, after every take or to talk about what was for breakfast. He just wanted to be Adolf Eichmann yeah. when he was there. Um, and I th- actually think it was great. Uh, Is that difficult the, though also though too because he's so locked in that you yeah. want to make sure. Yeah, because like I was watching even, uh, was it uh, Man, the Man on the Moon doc with uh, Jim Carrey and my mm-hmm. Milos Foreman. And you could tell that it was working for Milos but it was difficult for him to really approach Jim this particular way because he was so locked in. But when you get someone who, like you said, mm-hmm. it was good, but is it tough? It, it can be tough. Uh, I mean, actually, I think with with Sir Ben, you know that um, he's <laughs> anything coming out is going to be great. Um, so I was really happy to kind of be surprised at times by yeah. by what he was going to do. Um, as a matter of fact, I encouraged him to surprise me. I said, like, I want you to hide something from me uh, throughout this process because Adolf Eichmann was a really kind of uh, complicated, difficult to track down character, kind of a chameleon. Um, and I, no, I would go to him and give him a suggestion, and he would just sort of pause and say it's in there as though it had gone into his processing uh machine yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> whether something would come out or not right who knew and and so and again watching someone like sir ben kingsley i'm sure as a filmmaker and writer you're, you're just you're able to you're just you're learning just from someone like that yeah uh you sometimes you don't notice all of the things that he's doing until later in the editing room you know yeah. then you get to watch it millions of times oh that's really interesting what he was doing yeah do you have the luxury to shoot something like this in a sequential order, especially yeah. when you have two main characters that are that are so uh, uh, manipulative in different ways? I imagine mm-hmm. if you don't shoot in order, it could get confusing tracking where they are in terms of their missions and goals. It makes it so hard for the actors if you're not shooting in sequence. Um, it happens all the time where you're like, oh no no, this is the part after you fell in love with. Actually, you're you're about to break up, but you 
it, you know, you, you've had sex, but I know you haven't shot that scene yet. Um, and that's not what happens in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but we definitely wanted to shoot. So, so this involved, you know, sometimes going up and down stairs with, with equipment within this house that we were using in order to do it, which is kind of inefficient. But I think it was necessary to, to try to shoot these scenes in sequence so that the, the development of the mission and the, and the atmosphere uh, inside this house, which is, you know, th these, these guys were stuck with Adolf Eichmann for, for 10 days. They're stuck with a man who was um, partially responsible for killing members of their own family um, and the sort of developing sense of dread and, and panic uh, was, was really important. The movie is Operation Finale. It comes out on August 29th. It has Sir Ben Kingsley and Oscar Isaac. And we have Chris White's here. We're talking to him. You're, you're a New York guy, right? Is that what I'm from New York. What part? Uh, I am from, well, I grew up on the Upper West Side. Okay. And I bounced around, of, of Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm from Queens. That's why I mm -hmm. asked too. And as mm -hmm. I'm looking, and I'm curious if people have told you that you look like the late great Christopher Reeve. Do you get that <laughs> often? Yeah, uh, actually, once uh, I, I when, when I bought my my first house in Los Angeles, uh, there, there was I, I sort of inherited the guy who would clean the jacuzzi or put chlorine or whatever yeah. in it. And I remember meeting him for the first time, and I said, "Hey, I'm, I'm Chris." And he looked at me really strangely, <laughs> sort of shaken. Uh, and later, I got a, a, a bill addressed to Christopher Rivas. When, oh, I think when no he way. was saying he thought it was Christopher Reeve, which was interesting because this was after Christopher Reeve had been um, Her, was paraplegic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he obviously had a moment where he thought the whole thing was a scam. Oh, really? um, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. So well, I mean, it's it's a great compliment. Obviously, I, I'll take too. it. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I think uh, I now look like old Superman. Well, I mean, look, <laughs> Superman in general was my favorite superhero. Um, American Pie, one of the one of my favorite comedies Thank uh, you. too. So Thanks, I mean, man. I want. I'm curious how you. New York kid, you, you kind of you, you. How long are you in New York before you shift off? Because I told this whole story yesterday on this show and mm -hmm. how I I went to California when I was um, I don't know twelve, right. and I went to San Diego for mm -hmm. like two, two three weeks with my mom and said I'm going. I don't know how, but right. I'm going to get there. This is the place. This is it. I don't know how I'm going to do yeah. it, but I'll do it. Yeah. I went to college in Florida and I got myself out here. Um, Great. How did you How did you do it? What was the plan? And, and when did you decide this is what I want to do? How did I get off the, yeah. the rough streets of Manhattan? It? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. The Upper yeah. Side, brutal. I know, right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, needs well, the Bronx. I, yeah, I went to uh, I went to high school in London when I was fourteen. Okay, uh, and took exams called A levels. But how does that happen? You go going to London? Is that just the the parents my, shifting everybody? So off? my dad, during you know when he was a refugee in the late thirties, uh, went to went to school in London. That yeah. was uh, where where he was sent uh, to to get out of uh, to get out of Dodge I when see. Hitler came to power. So I went to his old school, and it was supposed to be just like a, a, a year transfer, but I really liked it, uh, not the least because I was thousands of miles away from direct parental supervision. Right, right, right. Uh, and then I eventually um, moved to uh, L.A., I guess, when I was about 22. Yeah. What was that? Was that for necessity? Not necessity, but it was, it was like, fact you got to go there, you got to do this. To, it was to make a work it. thing. If we were, if my brother and I were, were going to really do this uh, seriously, yeah. um, to be on the scene. And I thought I would. I, I for years I thought I was going to go back to New York. You know, any any weekend. I think that's again because I felt the same way. I'm out yeah. here for like three weeks. I'm like, I can't, I, I can't do it. I'm like, no, I didn't want to learn the streets. Like I yeah. remember, I don't want to learn where Melrose is. I don't want to learn where this shit is. I'm just going back, and I'm not doing it. And then you meet the right people, friends, yes. and you and kind of and, and it changes the whole direction. It takes years to establish the right like network of friends and places that you want to go. If you, like in New York, you walk out on the street and there's a million things vying for your attention. And in, in L.A. There's just nothing unless you know exactly where to go. Just yoga studios. <laughs> Pretty much <laughs> yoga, yoga studios, studios and Chipotle's now. Marijuana right. dispensaries. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. So, uh, all right. So then when you're out here, so 22, you and your brother move out here? Yeah. Was your brother in London with you also? No. No, he, he wasn't. He wanted no part of that. He, oh, so. um, he was in New York. <laughs> Uh, he'd gone to Wesleyan University, um, specializing in uh, taking drugs and yeah. um, and films. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was much more prepared. Yeah. Than yeah. I was. He was ready. so he yeah he was prepared for L.A. for sure. Yeah. So um, you guys, because again, working with your brother was also for some people it, it might be tough. You know, uh, like, for me it was the dream. It was so, it. right. Yeah. yeah. Because you know when you're directing, it's very isolating. Um, your 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 job is kind of to be second guessed, and if you have somebody who occupies the same position as you, especially if you trust them like a brother, that's yeah. that's amazing. Absolutely. So you go and um, and how does it get started? What's the jump? What's the jump start? How does the careers go? 
Um, the the real start was when we we wrote Ants, which was this animated yeah. film yeah. Um, starring Woody Allen. It's been a uh, trivia question here. We do a show here. Right. It's been a trivia question. I, I, Chris Kaliski, our head writer, loves the movie. I think there's got to be at least thirty questions <laughs> so from Ants. Cool. I yeah, like yeah. Ants. I know everybody does. Yeah, I'm not physical ants. I don't like that, <laughs> but I like the movie. Yeah. Uh, no, the, yeah, I guess the question being, what was the other insect movie? Yeah, uh, right, right, right. <laughs> and the answer is right, ants. Right. Um, yeah, so, so that, that was our first, um, uh, that was our first credit. I mean, we wow. worked in the kind of, uh, like, world of uh, rewriting stuff that never gets made yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for years before that, which is kind of part and parcel of what you do when you're starting. Yeah, I worked for Joel Silver for mm -hmm. many years, and, um, and a lot of people don't realize how the development process works. Like you said, yeah. like Alter Carbon, by the way, a thing that just came out on Netflix, mm. that thing was in development for, for Silver. We had a like, screenplay for decades, it. Decades. Forever. Yeah, 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 forever. I mean, like the Wonder Woman, the Joss Whedon thing, all that yeah. stuff. It just like, so you, that's, and that's what they do. They bring in writers, say, hey, can you touch this thing up? Can mm -hmm. you do anything with this? And that's how you, that's how writers make their living. You it's know? a grind. Yeah, and then if they get like a spec thing built, then that's the dream, right? It gets to, get to kind of their, their big project. That thing. is the dream. Nobody really sells specs anymore. Right, yeah. no. It's because everything is derivative. Thing. Of of, uh, of pre-existing franchises, right. which is uh, okay, you know. Uh, even in even in streaming, though, too. Uh, oh, maybe not. I don't know. It's different. It's different. It's yeah. crazy how it's, yeah. it's shifting. Do you like the streaming services I mean, yet? There's amazing stuff being made for like long long format um, yeah. Uh, uh, work. Yeah, it, it, it's great. Um, it's great. I'm a little sad that people don't go to see that kind of stuff in front of a big screen yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, that's that's a bummer. Uh, you know, I'm kind of old-fashioned that way. That was what I was brought up to do. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you can't argue with the quality. It's true. Um, what about, so correct, uh, forgive me, but as far as television goes, have you dabbled uh, into television? Dabbled a, a little bit. My brother and I wrote a pilot of Fantasy Island many years ago. Oh, wow. Uh, actually, no, my brother's done more than dabbled. He, he had a show called uh, Mozart in the Jungle on oh, Amazon yeah, of for, course. Yeah, for yeah, quite yeah. a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that something that you'd want to go? You want to stay? Oh, yeah. you, you'd want to go into yeah, absolutely for sure. I mean, yeah. into this, and I think that a lot of times, when you hear creators, one of the reasons they want to go into TV now because it's so different than it was say 15, 20 years ago, right? Yeah, uh, it, it's. I, th I think the quality is much higher, uh, and also you, you can now sort of tell a story over the course of ten or, or twelve hours. It's not just serialized. Yeah. Uh, just, sorry, it's not just a sort of episodic. Um, and the problem with, with making movies sometimes is that you've got to tell a story within two, two and a half hours. Right. So everything uh, happens very quickly, and every third act is just people running around screaming uh, before like the Makuga. good guys win. That's like you. Well, that happens. That's your life. Yeah. My third <laughs> act. <laughs> you yeah. live in a third act. Yeah, yeah. he does. He's yelling and screaming. My entire life is like that. sounds dangerous. Yeah. But it's yeah. funny that you mention that because when you like some, look at something like, like Star Wars, right, mm -hmm. with Rogue One, and then you look at – so Favreau's got this TV show now coming on the right. Disney streaming service. Yeah. There's so much story now to tell over what ten, what they say, ten or twelve episodes, whatever it might be, and and so you have this now. Do you do you think that Star Wars actually can benefit more from the long form on television than it does uh, features? Yeah, I think it could. I mean, I think there are all kinds of ways to tell a story. Um, it, it really eventually depends on the on the talent of the people yeah. doing it and and. Uh, how they uh, treat the material, whether like you can, you can, you should revere the material in some ways, but you can be too reverential as well, and then yeah. things just get stuck. I'd love to see Star Wars movies in sort of different genres, different right. kind of feels. To kind them. of what Marvel did, right? Is what Marvel's done yeah. been great at at kind of uh, you know understanding uh, the the width of possibilities. Yeah. Like I mean, Thor Ragnarok was probably my favorite movie of last year. So it was like Phantom good. Thread so and Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. the big yeah. ones for me. When I hear you say that, it makes so much sense when you just look at your resume. Because you're, you're like, <laughs> well, you're, you're like oh, it's, it's a good thing, though. I mean, you're going to be working forever. I mean, when you're able to do all that stuff, I mean, it's for sure. But I want to ask, and if you can't answer this, that's fine. But I want to ask a question about Rogue One because mm -hmm. I heard I heard a thing that in the original um, film or script or whatever that mm -hmm. Vader wipes everybody out like he kills uh felicity jones he takes out uh takes them all out and because disney saw saw that and said no nah, we, we can't do that we got to do the the deep impact version instead mm -hmm. where everybody kind of goes out heroically is that mm -hmm. can you confirm or deny that i deny it you deny it i deny it absolutely okay, all right uh i can't speak to like what what happened after i was uh, i finished my my duties because once yeah. your security clearance is is over it's over <laughs> it's out yeah <laughs> your email is shut You're down out. And yeah. everything but n at no, I mean, certainly wasn't uh, like in the original uh, script that I uh, came onto. Um, I was never aware of that in in the process. Okay. Um, as you probably know, that the the Vader being badass at the end was an idea from the editor, which is fantastic. Actually, yeah. I thought it was great. 
Um, what uh, what I came to at the beginning had had um, the two of them surviving had had uh, Diego oh, and Felicity's uh, characters surviving. Because was there a possibility to try to do like a rogue, not rogue two, but you know, an, another story with all these characters? Well, I, I suppose there was that possibility. Um, there was also a sense that it was a little too harsh to to kill them off. Yeah, but I put put a stop to that. Yeah, all right, and, kill them, kill and them all. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> would you want to do another one, or would you, or you want to kind of move on? Yeah, I mean, I, I sort of feel that I've already done the one that I wanted to do. Yeah. I was so lucky to to because when you get called in on on these meetings, you they don't tell you which which bit of the franchise is going to be for. And I was like, I was praying like, please not Boba Fett, please not Boba Fett. <laughs> you didn't want to do that. Boba. Would face me with a huge paradox, which is that I think Boba Fett sucks, um, <laughs> but but I wanted to work on Star Wars. Right. Thank you. Uh, right. so, Thank you. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, he dies by accident. That's yeah. very silly. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it, there was always the kind of discussion of maybe if he was like kind of like Dread Pirate Roberts and it was the mantle mm-hmm. was passed on, or like the uh, underworld, okay. or the underworld itself was kind of cool. But like you're yeah. right, like the, the the one that we were given, who gives a shit? Right. Yeah, but but sorry. So you're, you're saying no, this so first. so when I got into the room and they said oh, we're we're, we're going to do something based on the the opening crawl, I was so in. Yeah. That's Mike cool. Flynn. Um, you know, someone else that we have on uh, on our show, the Schmodown over there, is mm-hmm. uh, Thomas Ian Nichols. Who, uh, Good man. Yeah, yeah, and he comes in, he, and he plays too. And uh, and I, we were talking because I also we also talked to director Kate Cannon, who just did Blocker. Mm-hmm. And the reason I bring her up is because I saw a lot of similarities in that movie mm. to American Pie. Um, and I just wanted to talk to you about that. Like, that, what was that? Oh, because that you went from again ants to mm-hmm. was it was it direct to ants to America? Yeah, Park? yeah, that was kind of the next thing we did. Yeah, yeah. because that one that that blew up because that, that was at a festival, a couple of festivals too. Because I remember hearing mm-hmm. about. I was in college when the movie came out. Mm-hmm. And everybody was talking about this movie. This is the movie that you have to see. Right. And I, and you hear that it's supposed to be raunchy. That's the first thing when you're in college. Mm-hmm. You go, oh, it's raunchy. Okay, I got to go see it. But it was so much more than that. And Thank it had, you. you know, it had hard. It's, I mean, still, it's one of the most memorable uh, coming of age stories, maybe of all time. And yeah, thanks, man. top ten movie lines of all time about the flute. I mean, it's without yeah. a doubt. easily, <laughs> easily. Without but, a doubt. but 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 you can be because we Perry and I saw a movie recently that the, the discussion became: was it crass to be crass, mm-hmm. and did it serve a purpose? And I think you can be crass and serve a purpose if it fits what the characters are. Exactly. That was the importance of the movie. Perry shaking yeah. your head. You had to Thanks. bring that up. I'm ready to explode. Well, right but we now. can't talk about <laughs> I know, that. I know, yeah, I know. yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, but but that's really what that movie's all about. Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think um, we, my, Paul and I, were really intent on uh, trying to to uh, bring out the heart in in these characters to sort of to at the same time as delivering on kind of the idea of a teen sex comedy. Yeah. To also uh, try to say something about you know the basic decency and innocence of these yeah. kids <laughs> as well um, and um, and and yeah to sort of balance all of the raunch which we knew had to be in there with um, with, with some real heart I mean I think uh, Eugene Levy was a huge part of that as I well I love that dude yeah. man he is something else how yeah. I mean we're meeting him for the first time because you, you obviously like, you're a big comedy fan I am a big comedy and fan so and, and SCTV was, yeah. was huge uh, uh, to me as a kid uh, yeah, that's the most sort of starstruck I, I think I've been. I can um, imagine because um, because he'd meant so much to me and my brother. We used to like sneak out uh, to watch TV late at night yeah. and watch watch SCTV in Splash. And, what a week yeah. I'm having! <laughs> it's, it's amazing. He's the best. He's the best. So that's got to be. I mean, you got to take that with you. And like I was talking about before, with um, learning from Sir Ben Kingsley, I, the stuff that you learn in comedy. Do you bring that over from the stuff because? You put about a boy next to uh, American Pie, very different movies, but mm-hmm. still, there, there's, there's, yeah, yeah, there's a link. Um, yeah, there's a link. Well, <laughs> uh, the, you know, there is a bathroom scene in in Operation Finale, and I, I was like, oh man, I'm in the bathroom again. I really tried to resist <laughs> doing that. What is that? What is the fascination with the bathroom? Um, yeah, I mean, That's it came down to like uh, we we were, you know, when we were doing the sound on on in that bathroom scene, I was like, okay, look, guys, I've been here before. This is exactly how much noise. Like poop noise, I want. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're not going to go crazy with it, right? right. Um, but uh, I, I think 
it, it's sort of hard to make the segue uh, it's sort of um, conceptually from yeah. American Pie to Operation Vanilla, but I guess you, you, you want to approach all of the characters as human beings who um, have their own uh, dilemmas. That's that's what's kind of... Do you of, have a go-to poop guy that you like that's uh, like, the best Colin poop guy Jerry, in he is so good at the poop noise. Right. Um, no, I, I, I probably should have gone back to the, to the source. <laughs> yeah. Finch's poop. <laughs> um, I, w- I was actually deeply uncomfortable because de- I, I don't like poop gags at all. I knew I had to do it, right? So I was feeling like, why, why do we have to revisit this? And, There's and a realism to that particular poop situation yeah. that kind of grounds everything that happens it's, and makes you realize, you know, you, you think it's a, it's a flashy operative type movie, right. but these are the moments that have to happen. Yeah, it, it was weird. So yes, there's a moment where Eichmann, uh, you know, he has to be accompanied to the bathroom. And it's, it's a weird moment of kind of like almost body horror in, in a way. <laughs> But also um, realizing this: this is a human being with a human body, not a, some kind of incarnation of evil. And that doesn't excuse anything that he did. But you're you're still dealing with this radical evil being committed by a person. And guys, once again, the movie is Operation Finale. It and it opens again August 29th. Sitting here with Chris White. And before we uh, let you go here mm. today, Chris, I did um, want to say there's two things that I read that I didn't know before. And th- the first is that you visited uh, the set of King Kong with, with uh, Peter Jackson. Is yeah. That, um, I love that. I'll tell you what about th- that, that movie. Because Lord of the Rings... Is one of my three, some of my favorite movies. Uh, it's and a huge accomplishment. It's just such a huge accomplishment because, yeah. of, especially when you hear the story behind it, the fact that he wanted to do this three, and they were just saying, "No, you got to do one movie." And he's mm-hmm. like, "Just the whole story, new line, and everything." Mm-hmm. But then the way that he made that happen, the way that he he succeeded, and and comparing people were comparing those three movies to at the time the greatest trilogy. Also, was the Star Wars trilogy, mm-hmm. and Kevin Smith famously in Clerks too uh, mm-hmm. does it. So when King Kong came out, I was like. Get me there because I love King Kong. And right. I loved that movie. I still think the movie's an hour too long, my mm-hmm. personal opinion. I, I think that, um, but I think another big accomplishment, and it yep. really started more so of what the great Andy Serkis mm-hmm. could do. Yeah. So what was that set? What, well, first of all, how do, you, how do you get invited to that set? Were you and Peter friends, friendly? Uh, we I actually didn't know Peter at all. Okay. Um, he, I was uh, about to work on the Golden Compass, which mm-hmm. is going to have um, loads of CG. And uh, Peter invited me uh, and my producing partner uh, out to uh, to New Zealand to go and check out what it was they did. Now, I think perhaps down the line was the notion of Weta doing some of the digital work, so I could say okay. it was, um, you know, there, there were ulterior motives. But actually, he was just super cool. H- yeah. Him and his his wife were were fantastic to us. They kind of you know, they played host to us because when you go to New Zealand, you're going to stay for a few days. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. a long freaking way. First trip to um, New Zealand, also. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it was. It was. It was amazing to go there. I mean, it's a very beautiful uh, yeah. country um, for starters. But um, to be on the set, it was it was surprisingly um, ahead of its time in terms of the deployment of technology. Yeah. Right. So. Um, they were doing a lot of stuff with motion capture already, and now it's kind of uh, old hat. Yeah, and but, we'll, we'll, but they're but they're perfecting it on, on like you said, because that movie did things back then that nobody was doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was really interesting to see a movie that was really kind of handmade in in a studio. They, they were building entire um, environments um, from from nothing, yeah. right? From from digital. Uh, from from software, um, so that was really fascinating. And seeing that, like this was a new kind of filmmaking that was coming into being. Um, there was even less use of practical locations than than in uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And Lord of the Rings was this in- incredible example of how these two things were blended together, uh, yeah. CG and live. So you've got, I mean, you had comedies, dramas, um, and then big budget movies, smaller budget movies, and what's uh, so. First thing is, what do you think you took from? Because after hearing you from working with Eugene Levy and mm-hmm. Kingsley, what did you take away from shooting this from this movie, Operation Finale? What did you take away from it as a creator, and what do you look to do next in your career? What are you looking forward to doing? Um, I, well, I think the, the one thing I took away was kind of being open to uh, what was going on in the world at the time, um, uh, which is to say, like. 
uh, as we were making this film about Nazis and escaped Nazis and Argentina, which had was kind of had a bunch of Nazi sympathizers, um, all of these things were happening around the world and and domestically. Charlottesville uh, happened right. when uh, while we were shooting, um, and to try not to signal too much that that was what was going on in the film, but to be open to it uh, and to uh, to just kind of go with that on the yeah. fly to be inspired by it. Was was uh, was fantastic. Does that hit you? Emo- like, uh, obviously, the movie hits you emotionally. But I mean, I, so when when um, Spielberg was making, I was I was a big Robin Williams guy. Mm-hmm. So when Spielberg was making Schindler's List, he was so, you know, it, it took it out of him. So right. he would call Robin Williams every mm-hmm. night. So Robin Williams would cheer him up. Like, mm-hmm. do you get into these when you're when you're making these kind of darker movies? You know, do you? How do you? How do you? Do you? Do you want to stay there, or do you need to get lightened up a little bit so then you can work a little fresher? Yeah, I don't think I really want to stay there. But I, I've got to say, for for me, um, my experience sort of working with my dad um, when I was a kid prepared me for all of these okay. things. There was nothing that we portrayed on film that surprised me, which I guess is kind of weird and, and creepy, but. Yeah. Um, but even even the scenes you know in which people are being shot or uh, gassed, uh, I, I wasn't particularly thrown by it. Not cert- not half as much as what was going on back home. Right. Yeah. Well, Chris, thank you so much for joining us here thank you. today. It was a pleasure Chris. to have you, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, guys. Yeah. Chris White, make sure you check out the movie August 29th, Operation Finale. Please come back and see us again. It was a pleasure talking Thanks, to you. That was great. All right, guys, Thank so you. we're going to be back after the break here. A lot of things going on. We're going to send Brett to the movies to go talk to some people on his cell phone. And I still want to know who'd won that damn fight. So tell me, the monkey or the uh, bicycle guy after the break. Hey everyone, Mark Ellis here. You know, when I'm not trying to clone dinosaurs or drinking in my neighborhood watering hole, I am probably hosting Collider Movie Talk. It's a flagship show here at Collider. I like to say that because I'm the host of it. It's every day, almost. It's four days a week, which is still pretty good, above 50%. You can watch it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 4 p.m. Los Angeles time is when we do it. It's live, so you can participate in the live chat room. Go ahead and give us your thoughts on every story we have coming, because it's all the latest movie news of the day. Who did what at the box office? What horrible red box movies Bruce Willis signed on to? The DC, the Marvel, the Star Wars, the Lord of the Rings. Are they making new? I think they're, they're, it's a TV show, and we still might talk about it anyway, because we love movies around here. It's myself and an extra expert panel of guests, including John Rocha, Perry Nemiroff, Jeff Snyder, and other noted noters of note. You guys are going to love this show, and then we take your live Twitter questions at the end of the show at Collider Video. You can always use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk to get in touch with us, so subscribe right here to Collider Video. Check out Movie Talk, and check out the Collider Movie Talk podcast feed. We have a podcast feed now. You don't have to look at this handsomeness. You can just listen to it, whether you're driving to work, whether you're driving from work, or you don't have a job, but you have a basement and ears. You can listen to Collider Movie Talks feed. You can get it at Apple Podcasts or on iTunes. You also get Mailbag. That's the show that's hosted by Perry Nemeroff a lot more professionally than I run this pirate ship. That's our weekend show where she takes your letters. I don't know if you write them or you email them. You have to ask her. And Afterthoughts, hosted by Ryan Snelling and Jay Williams. I almost said Ryan Williams and Jay Snelling. Would anybody have known the difference? I certainly would. I would have felt bad about it because I'm a nice person, and that's why I host Collider Movie Talk. Check it out in video form or on our podcast feed. Hi there. I see that you're enjoying Collider Live. After this show, why not check out Collider Games, where we play, well, games. We review games. We talk about things, anything that's going on in the gaming world, our opinions, news, all kinds of stuff. So check it out. If you like it, stick around and subscribe. Hello, Collider fans. I'm Christian Harloff, and you see my stupid name in the background because that's my other show. It's one-on-one with me, Christian Harloff. What the hell is it? I just sit down and talk to people. I literally just sit down and talk to people about what the hell's going on in their lives and their careers, and it's a long-form interview show. Uh, Originally, it aired on Collider Video as far as the YouTube channel goes, but we moved it on over, and it's on the Collider Video Podcast, Collider Podcast, excuse me, on YouTube 
go on over there if you want to see the video and see the pretty faces that I'm talking to. Had some great guests over the past. Um, and we're going to have a lot more. And there's going to be people that you, maybe some celebrities or actors and actresses, producers, writers, all that stuff. But there's also a lot of the people that you know around here. I could have Copster on there. I could have Jeff Snyder, John Roca, Mark Riley, Roxy Stryer, whoever. And I'm going to find out more about them. Long form and also go to Apple Podcasts and check out the one-on-one -on -one feed with Christian Harloff. And not only is my show on there, Mark Riley, the Riley Roundtable, which is another sit-down, long-form interview show, that's also there. And when Steve Frosty Weintraub talks to Kevin Smith or George Takei, that's going to be on that podcast feed also. So if you're taking a long drive and you like those long-form interviews, pop on the one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff, give it a rate, comment, do all that because it helps the show and it makes Podcast One go, hey, you know what? Those people should get ad money. Hello everyone, Perry here, and what I've got to do right now is remind you that Mailbag airs every Saturday and Sunday right here on the Collider Video YouTube channel and also in podcast form as well. Podcast One, iTunes, we are on the Movie Talk feed, and this is the show where we get to sit back and relax and discuss a whole variety of questions that you guys send in. You send them in on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email, Mailbag at Collider.com. Send in those questions and maybe myself and my special guest for the week, that's what this blank spot is for, will answer your question right here on one of the shows. So don't forget, check out Collider Mailbag every Saturday and Sunday on the Collider Video YouTube channel. We're back after the break here, Collider Live. Hashtag Collider Live. Thank you to Chris Weitz for coming in. That was great. That was great. I didn't man. see Chris, I didn't see Christopher Reeve up top, and then as soon as you said it, I was like, yes. When you look, you know what the chat was doing? Brandon right. Ralph. Well, yeah. yeah. Who looks like Who looks like Christopher, Christopher Reeve. Reeve? Yeah. So Jeez. I mean, that was funny. So it was it was good. It, I love, man. I love to just get to know people like that too because his career was so so yeah. vast. And he, he, you look. I mean, he's that's an underrated dude. I, I mean, Golden Compass. When it, listen, it's a huge yeah. movie. That is a huge movie. Yeah. So directing that from like you know again the ranging the arc of the whole thing very impressive. Well, that's yeah. my point. And I, you know I think you know me. I'm pretty. I I'm in love with Golden Compass. Sure. But but you look at all the other stuff that this guy's done. Yeah. I mean he's. I told him he's like American Pie and then he, writing Rogue One and and doing about a boy is about one a boy. Of, one of those movies that is so good and adapted yeah. screenplay Oscar nomination. Right. Well, yeah. dude, dude's talented, man. I mean, dude I mean, is talented. and but like the reason I was telling him is that like he's gonna work for him because like. There are it's it's tough in this business. So whether you're an actor or an actress yeah. and you're doing one particular thing, it's like you can get pigeonholed into that thing and you sure. can either make a career for that until you retire or you just don't get booked anymore. Right. And when you're a guy like that who's making oh yeah, I can do comedy, I can do drama, I can do big budget, yeah. I can do small budget. Like, you got a good shot to last for a long time in this I've, fickle business. I read a book about the movie Operation Finale a couple of years back. Um because I'm so yeah. interested in World War II and post World War II. Yeah. More importantly, now that you see a lot of this, because I feel like a lot of movies have a lot, and when I say a lot, I mean a ton, have hit World War II, right? Yeah, yeah. But post World War II is kind of ignored because we just think the war was over and that was, yeah, was done. It. We won, yeah, we won. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. But the whole rebuilding of Europe is something that's very interesting. The whole, the fact that. Like all of those Nazi sympathizers, I mean, weirdly enough, they hit on an X Men first class. Is all those Nazi sympathizers went to Argentina because there was no extradition, right. and they could yeah. hide there. They could hide yeah. there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, there's a lot of fascinating stories. And out there after World sure, War II, yeah. that's a lot. A lot of Italians went to Argentina that were, you know, Mussolini yeah. Nazi sympathizers. That oh, kind of thing. And so there's yeah. a ton of Italians that are from Argentina that right. eventually emigrated to the United States. That kind of situation. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, history, 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 here. History, history talk with uh, yeah, with Josh Makuga. But TV talk is coming back with Josh Makuga next. Friday, that first episode. Friday, yeah. there will be a podcast feed available for that one. You can yep. find it on the YouTube channel, pod, the podcast channel, which you can also find clips of this show on the podcast channel. Make sure if you're not subscribed to that channel, you do that. It's it's Collider Podcast Network. Go and check that out for sure. Another oh. thing Thad and I are doing too. What's that? We're shooting an episode of Josh Birdie on this Thursday. Oh, you? I didn't realize we were releasing yeah. that to the to the people. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, a little teaser. We're gonna all shoot. Right. We're shooting a bunch of stuff for the campaign. You guys can see we're all wearing. Yeah, buttons. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, good. And uh, Thad and I are, are taking the reins on that one, and I uh, got three awesome guests. And uh, you know, if you guys like it, we may turn some other. We'll, we'll do, try some do some, some shit, some, some stuff. Yeah, so, I love so, this. and it's yeah. it's good. So we got Makuga doing that. He's back and in, in, in full effect. 
Tira and Collider already. He's working with Riley on Collider Quick. If yeah. you're not subscribed to Collider Quick, go on over there. Can't I wait. mentioned the boys yesterday over at uh, Afterthoughts, and they break down everything going on in the world in Collider. They're going to have a lot to talk about this week. Mm. Um, that can be found on the Movie Talk podcast feed. All these shows, like, and that is the one of the most important thing. Our podcast network right now is thriving, and all of our shows, if you listen to One on One or Jedi Counts or Heroes, even if you watch them, go to the feed and go subscribe there. Go and, and make sure that you are leaving comments. And this feed, when it goes up right now, or very soon, you subscribe to it and leave a comment. And we're going to be going through those comments. And the three best comments are going to get copies of Avengers Infinity War Blu-ray. You will not win if you comment and say, I'm commenting for the Blu-ray of Avengers. <laughs> so nope. make a comment. I will comment pass you over too. so fast. Yeah. And I'm not going to go uh, super troll hunter here, too, because I'm just, I, I got to be honest, my, my, I've kind of changed my philosophy on it in yeah. general, too. But it's just like, I, it's, it's, it's a vocal minority, Christian. That's no, no, no but it's not even the minority. What, what I'm going to talk about more or less is, too, it's, it's, it's not necessarily, what I used to do is, is grab them by the head and scream at their faces. Yeah. And it's pointless. Sure. Um, so I think all I'm going to tell people now, if you're, if you're if if you're commenting to hate, then that's cool. You'll be thrown out. No one will ever hear of no you. Again. But if you're also um, if you're commenting because you don't understand, like you know, there's some people like I'm going. I'm never like if someone. Just, I'm always going to interview people like Chris White's and bring people on here like because I want to find out interesting people. Like, sure. sorry guys, not always going to be about Star Wars and superhero movies. I don't want to do that. I yeah. would be bored to death. I would. This is why I wanted to do this show. I'm bored of talking about just Star Wars and superhero movies. Mm-hmm. I love them. Sure. I love to, I mean, I, when I want to see like Ant-Man and, and, and I'll go see all those movies and I can't wait to see Aquaman. Can't we? But I'm, Bored of just talking about them. So mm-hmm. sorry if this if the headline isn't you know something along the lines of like what the next Marvel movie is. It's not this type of show. I mean, I had the meltdown on TV Talk, the, like one of the last episodes yeah. of TV Talk. When I had the meltdown about Supergirl. I'm I'm just tired of those shows that don't have stakes. And yeah. well, see, my, but my thing is too. I'm not tired of the movies. I'm not tired of the movies. I'm not tired of the Star Wars. I'm not tired. I'm. It's just the endless wanting to talk about it's always it, speculation. About it. it's like, I don't then... mind like, Jedi Council. That's my time to talk about Star Wars. Like sometimes you know people tweet at me. Like, what are, like today, someone tweeted me about a particular thing that happened in one of the comic books, and I responded for sure. But I don't want to have all conversations on Twitter about Star Wars. I don't yeah. want to talk about Marvel movies all the time. I like movies. I like yeah. film. I want to like. To me, I'm more interested in learning how Chris White's a very important, um, successful director. Yeah. A, wanted to do a fucking badass movie like the one he's doing now and how he got there and learning yeah. about it that's because of his dad and living in London. Like that, that t- People are interesting to me when you really dive into them. Like Just like, what's Avengers 2 going to be like, Josh? What's your take? Just what's for the take? sound bite. Just, just for, for the, the sound, sound bite. bite. I don't need to do that. Yep. Yes, yeah, pretty and much. It's like, again, those, those, impor- those conversations are very important on heroes. They're very important when they come up in topics of movie time, but that's not what this show is. No. So if that's why you're tuning in and you're not tuning in because of it, then I understand. I bid you farewell. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that. But I also... Maybe we gain those new fans that don't want to just hear about that. I hope so. I mean, I hope so. I hope, what I hope is that people listen to this show and they say, oh, they can talk about anything. Like literally, and we get everything and it's expanded yeah. on, and you have fun. We can talk right? about we can talk about Toronto Film Festival. We can talk about shaving balls. <laughs> we can talk about you know fingy and the binky. Garbage we can talk about oh, yeah. We can still getting tagged with some balls here. Listen, man, that's that's the thing. That's the show. Like yeah. even last night, you know, for Fernandez was was concerned about the the conversation with you and uh, and and Ryan, right? Yeah. And I was like, look, man, that's the show. Yeah. I was like, same thing. That like the show is. There might be an argument on it, but at the end, we're going to figure it out. Maybe they'll hash it out. Maybe they won't. Turned out you, you, that you did. But that's, I'm a reasonable individual. That's I'm a gentleman. It's a very sometimes. good conversation. But that's the show. Yeah. That's the show. So, did you see when he flipped you off at the end? Yeah, I saw. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I want. Hashtag. That's the show. Yeah, um, that is. A that's good actually hashtag. a good yeah. hashtag. That's yeah. what I want to do. Should, that's the shirt. That's the next shirt. That's, that's the, the show. Is. So like we, have, um, we have we uh, have Finstock. People can right. ask him about Finstock. Yeah. Is he going to be making uh, a return? No, I think and he's staying. Look, here's the thing. Uh, uh, for as, far, as far as he, no, he's they were saying, me. you better have yeah. Finstock on the show. It's not. It's not the show. Look, here's the problem. Finstock's a guy with very, very controversial opinions. So, of course, he's going to be on the show. <laughs> yeah, uh, come on, of course he's. he's, he's gonna say. Come on, come on. He's <laughs> we in, just got to turn up the microphones. He's, yeah, uh, well, yeah. He, I mean, he, always, he does this. He's like, yeah, yeah. So I was, yeah, I was, I was in Europe. Oh yeah, for sure. And I was, and when I was there, I was like. Yeah. What do you think I was doing? Yeah. And, it's like, and he, he's just right, really, right, right. but he is actually in Europe yeah. right now. Roxy said something to me yesterday that 
was so bizarre, but I believe it. Apparently, he's trying to buy a country. Did you hear this? Like a really cheap country. He's trying to buy it. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, no. I'm not making Can this you up. Do that? Did you hear this? No, but I'm not surprised. I, I forgot to ask. For, I don't know how I forgot to ask. Or? I don't. It's Finn's not. <laughs> I don't know what he's trying to do, but like he told me. I mean, not he. She told me yesterday that, and I, and I was like, "Wait, are you joking?" She's like, "I'm 100 percent serious." And I'm like. We have to talk about it. And I Roxy's forgot. also very gullible. Love you, Rox. But she's extremely gullible. And maybe, and maybe he did the, you know, I'm going over to buy a country. Yeah. Uh, that's very possible. Probably. I, very When possible. he's really just going over there to sightsee. Yeah. You know, so you think. I, I mean, saw you never, Do you really ever know he, what... He who, started in what's, Iceland, What's too? the lie and what's that? the truth? Right. Well, right, right, right. That's, that's the balancing lie, act. 99% lie, 1% right. truth. Right. Is so. Finstock's kind of motto. You know? <laughs> it is. 99% line, 100, yeah. 1% truth. You know, I saw him right before he was leaving. I hadn't seen him in a while. And I was like, what are you What are you doing? He was with some guy I'd never seen before. Of course. And uh, He's a lot he's, of accomplices. Yeah. And he said, oh, I'm heading over to Europe for a couple couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, actually, about six weeks. And I said, six weeks in yeah. Europe? Is and that how long he's gone I for? think so. It's, I mean, he definitely said it's going to be more than a month. They I had kind of like an open-ended really? ticket. Yeah. What, and I tweeted. Be, his lady's working. Yeah, no, no. She's with him. Yeah, but she's going to be working out there. Maybe. No. There's no way the, he's paying for that. No, no, no. You kn- Do you <laughs> yeah. know this little backstory with me? I was supposed to go on this trip with them. <laughs> for six I am weeks? Not, I am not kidding for you. For six weeks? That's it was going to be, it, we were talking about a four weeks yeah. at, at, the, at the time. We were going to start planning some Europe stuff. They ended up going this way because I ended up getting engaged. Getting, getting engaged, engaged right. instead, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, so that was the, and probably saving my life in the same way. Riley was planning I can hear, hear Finn's like, Jokes on you. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Riley so, was planning it like seven bottles of wine deep. He's like, I mean, t- I we're yeah. gonna go to Rome. Yeah. We're eight. gonna go to Iceland. Eight, eight, eight yeah. bottles. Eight <laughs> bottles. Uh, but he's out there. I don't know what he's doing. And we'll, we'll have, of, course, of course we'll have him on the show. And the question is, I know that we have a lot of um, whether it's Schmodown or Collider fans in uh, in Europe. So if you see Finstock, you got to take a picture. With yeah. Him. You got to see him for sure. That's gonna be crazy. You know, we um when we finally do our international tour. I'd love to. Whenever that well, happens. Well, speaking of uh, start, well, the way it's going to happen is getting more people to come out to these live shows. We have our last one. We have our last live event on, uh, and it's it's right behind Makuga there, that poster. It's our last it's one. Fun. It's September 8th, 2018. It could be the last live event that we ever do. I don't know. Really? But it, maybe. I don't know. I mean, we got we got to see. We're, we're about 220 tickets. We need about sell another 100. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. That was and, perfect. And we can have... we announce what the Wildberries are doing at this time? Of course, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. The uh, the Wildberries will be doing some crowd warm up yeah. to get that place literally of on course. fire. Yeah, of course. Uh, of course ten, you, it's, will. you know, five to eight to ten minutes. Who knows? Of Elliot and I just really getting that crowd going. Yeah, going to, uh, to get to get excited. When's the when's Who the t-shirt? That? Can't. Is that you? It's me from the first live event. Sounds like me. It's a little. Oh, oh yeah. Come on. Come can we? On. Can, you're coming out with a t-shirt cannon, right? I'm hoping because you know some on. wild berries. They, they have the slingshot. We got the slingshot. I know you have. No, no, I know. I want you to upgrade yeah. to the cannon. Well, you I know, think it would be important it, for the image you know how much that is a cannon is. Yeah, cannons. I don't care. I don't like know. The last time it didn't really work out too well. I hit Elliot in the back of the head. Yeah, that was. Really funny. Did you yeah. smack him in the back of the head? Yeah, with the launcher. On accident. Yeah, yeah. Did it hurt? Did not see that coming. Uh, he said it hurt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is that on camera? We gotta look at that. Yeah, um, it hurts. But anyway, the next event is on September 8, 2018, which is this year. And you got uh, Dan, Dan Merle and John Roca, former rivals and our teammates, and they go yeah. up against Winston Marshall and Stacy Howard. Should be a really good match. Stacy is is really underrated. I think she, she, she smoked she's me. She's really yeah. She did. She's, she's good. Winston Marshall has been putting up a nice fight here. He went two and zero in his first two team matches, and now they're battling up against arguably two of the best players that we have. And then the main event. What's his backstory? Who is he? Winston Marshall is part of World's Finest with Eric Zipper. They okay. went they went two and zero, and they they lost their match against the Shire Wolves. Uh, and now they're now they're playing in the in the live event. But gotcha, um, gotcha. but uh, so we now but we also the main event we got Jason Inman defending the Inner Geekdom title. Yeah. And he's playing up against Mara Kanopic, who has been on fire four and oh. Interesting going stuff up. there. And she's the first inner geekdom player ever to go four and oh. So she's now gonna be she's playing. A buzz up. She's really good. <laughs> There's Jason a Emerson. reason why Dan Merle and her are uh, I know. Yeah. And well what I love about her, she she does not promote herself as Dan Merle's girlfriend at all. No. She wants to make her she wanted to make her name on her own, and she did it, and she's won the tournament. And now she plays for the title, so it's be, it's be worth it, guys. Come on out, last one. We get your tickets now. It's uh, I think all the VIP tickets are gone, but we have schmodownlive.com. Go over there, buy your tickets. Brett Sheridan, mm. by the way, 
Got to meet his son this morning in the building. He's, that kid is tan. That well, he's a beach tan. kid. They live in El Segundo. He is a beach kid, yeah. But uh, he, he's, he, I told him he looked like Zach Morris, and he looked at me Definitely. like I was like, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Like, like no sweet idea. like of Zach and Cody? Like, what he, would he have known? He, not that. Yeah, so. All right, so thank you. We got a there phone call is. coming in. And so line. Brett Sheridan, we sent them over to, uh, we were going to do Brett to the Future. And they're like, you know what? We're just going to send them to the movies. We sent them over to the Brett movie to the theater, movies. the AMC Burbank. Synergy and the brand. Brett, Brett, are you over there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. All right, so <laughs> what's it? So paint the picture. It's pic- hot. It's, it's hot, hot. It's sweaty. All right. Paint the picture to me right now. Is it so? It's right now. It's it's Tuesday, and it is like uh, you know. It's, no, it's not even noon. It's, it's not even noon. PST. Is it busy over there? Or is it kind of barren? I'm. I was surprised how busy it is, and really? I'm looking at times here, and we've got. Uh, What's the big movie? Uh, uh, Mission Impossible, twelve thirty. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spyro Dump Me, one ten. Meg, twelve thirty. Nice. Uh, nice. You know, so I mean, there's there's a few things going on all right now. I, I had a big rush of people, but then they all went upstairs once you guys. Uh, uh, okay, up. <laughs> so then here's here's the game. Here's the game because because of those movies, you got that. You got Crazy Rich Asians. Um, so yes. All yes, right, sir. so I'm gonna Brett's gonna go up to the first person and see what they're going to see. Yeah. Um, I think that they're going to see the first person he hits. I think they get. I see. I Mission Impossible. I think Meg. Meg. What do you say? So Mission right. Impossible, Miss Meg. I, I, yeah, Meg. All I right. think the Meg is right. still going. All right, Brett, go find somebody who's got who's going to buy a ticket or, or coming off a ticket and go see what they're going to see and ask them a couple questions about why. Keep all right, it. all right. Are you are you going to the movie, sir? <laughs> yeah, um, what are you seeing uh, today? Uh, you're on a hit uh, ra- radio show called Collider Live. <laughs> yes. Would you talk to my friends? There's, they're not going to – you don't – or you aren't seen. It's just your voice. I just want to. They wouldn't know questions like what you're seeing and how you can go to a movie in the middle of the afternoon. Jesus, like the this. worst salesman of all time. Mile twenty two, but that's all I'm going to say. Mile, he's mile gonna, twenty two. He just said he's going to say mile twenty two, and that's all he's going to say. There it is. Hey, Mile twenty two. Forgot mile twenty two. All right, so yeah. we all lost that one. Mm-hmm. All right, so okay. mile twenty two. We forgot about mile twenty two. Wahlberg. That's out. a good one. effect. I got a gentleman buying a ticket over here. He might be able to. Might talk to me. He might not. Oh, I've been a shake of the head. Okay. Just ask. Just, movie. On just ask him what movie. Just ask him what movie. I say the what Meg. What movie Meg. have you seen today, sir? Mr. Possible. Meg. Why? Why? It's for it's for Collider Live. It's a movie uh, hit movie <laughs> uh, program on the internet, and we're ju- they sent me out. I'm the man on the street. <laughs> <laughs> He's seen the make. We got yes! The- yes! All right, all right, all right. Sorry, wow. so we got now, two. The, so the follow-up question is, and now it's the middle of the afternoon. How is it that you can afford a lifestyle to come to a movie in the middle of the afternoon? He works Thursday through Monday. He works Thursday through Monday. So oh, that's yeah. Perfect. All right. Yeah, so too, that's logical. Really too logical. All right, so there we go. All right, he so bought a zoo. All right, so Riley Thank and I. Thank you so much. All right, Riley and I are winning. Uh, what, so why don't you walk up Walk up to the actual movie theater itself, and let's ask the let's ask the. Uh, do you want to interview the interview one of the workers and see how they're doing today? <laughs> I don't okay. know if we do that. <laughs> right. Cops are, don't cops are, don't worry about it. Let me ask my, let me ask the fucking question. Go, <laughs> I hate when cops are comes in. He's like, oh, don't do that. I just fucking asked him to do it. Well, I'm just trying to produce a show of quality. Just, just here, go man. do it. Just oh, go do it. Like he's walking on the phone. He does that go shit. Get a microphone on the end that I could. This is hysterical. Yeah. Ooh, it's nice. Oh, yeah, it's go up to him and tell him to smell your fingers. Yeah, go do it. Cops are turn the mic off. Turn the mic off. I'm serious. Turn the mic off. Uh, fucking right. You're gonna produce right, the show by yourself. I'm over here at the ticketing uh, counter right. with the gentleman. Uh, good, good. Get the, the fuck out of there, then. Oh, turn my mic on, Brian. What's wrong with you? Calm down. <laughs> get him out of there, then. Calm down. Get, get, no, get out of there. Calm then. down. No, get out of what there. Are, you can't take what it. Do you want no, me to get do? out of there. I'm not anywhere. I'm not inside. Good. Take the mic off and go. Go. Go I'm back to your desk. It's gonna hurt your ears. Go back to your desk. All right. You there, Brett? Hello? Dad and yeah, son yeah, got so stupid. Yeah, like, we like, I didn't know what here. to do at that right. moment. I was like, do I step in? What? I want him off. All right. You want him off? I want him off. All right. All right. Yeah. You got it, Brett? Daddy can't take it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? Who can't get You know what? Come in, come in the fucking studio. Uh-oh. Here come we go. Come in the studio. Right, hey, go. Brett. Thanks for being here, Brett. No, Brett. Yeah. Put the mic. Nope. Grab the mic. There it is. What? We're in the middle of a fucking bit, and you're like, and you're, and you're, you're, you're don't do that, don't. Do, I just asked him to do it. Like if you have, yeah. after, but afterwards though, you can come He's in. A fucking worker that's But if you come right in, we, well, maybe he was, maybe he wasn't at the point. Maybe he can have a conversation yeah, with the thing. Fun radio. But how do you Wait, know? You it's not you. You chiming in is not. All right, then I won't chime in anymore. Perfect. Okay. Thank right, you. I'll be quiet. Good. Perfect. <laughs> so, yeah, and anyway, so let's get to the third one now. Are we back? You're back. <laughs> All right. So where are you now? Are you with the worker? Or are you? Oh. I'm inside, and the AC is just rocking, and I'm loving it. Okay, right good. Now. So now you're happy to be in there too. So where? So who are there? Yeah. Other people walking around? 
Yeah, there's some people. I'm just right by where they're tearing tickets. All right. What there's you... a, a girl over at the desk over here. I don't know if she's calling the cops on me or not, but <laughs> that, that might happen. It could, it could happen. The, the good news is, Brett, we have nothing in the budget to bail you out. I Brett, know. just say you're going. Yeah, you're good. asking your wife what the good movies are right now and tell, instead of telling her on the radio. I've got a couple people here. I can ask that. What, what are you seeing today? Which one? Alpha. Alpha? We got an Alpha? What's oh, Alpha? Alpha. Ask Remember the old uh, movie that? back in the day, you know, the Caveman Days and the first yeah. dog and, you know, it's a wolf. Is that an that, 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 that that animated film? No, it's a it's a live action. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You I haven't seen the, I the previous that one. So look, we got Alpha. What, what an eclectic mix here. We got Alpha. <laughs> alpha. We have The Meg. We have I Mile 22. Anybody going to see Billionaire Boys Club? Let yeah. me ask. I've got Gil here. He's he's tearing the tickets. I want to ask him, is this a particularly busy day? For an afternoon, he says it's very busy for this afternoon. Really? So why? Ask, I don't think school's back. Yeah, ask Gil uh, why. Why is that? Why is it so busy? Ask him what. Oh, oh, here you. Will you tell these just on the radio? Just tell them why everybody here. Yeah. It's a, right. If you're a premier member, it's five dollar tickets all day, uh, barring the, any of our big theaters, IMAX right. oh, there or there Adult is. Cinema or Prime. All right, thank Gil. you. Gil. I hope okay. I hope we didn't get you fired by asking you that question. Thank you so much. Gil. All right, that's free promotion for I, exactly. There you go. Exactly. So we're gonna get. They're gonna. They're good. What's you that? Go, go ahead. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's do. You go. I yeah. think I just nailed down the AMC sponsor. I'm just saying. All right, there good. It is. Well, look at that. All right, Brad, go do one more, and let's see if we can. We'll we'll take one more here. I'm sticking my Mission Impossible. You're gonna stick with Mission Impossible. Uh -huh. I'm gonna Here's go. Somebody that seems like she wouldn't want to talk to me. What did you think today? <laughs> uh, what's that? Black Klansman. Oh, there it is. Forgot about that. One. Uh, we should have done. All right, Brett, get out of there. So great so mix. Go, enjoy. All right, Brett, get out of what? All right, Brett, we'll see you back in the studio. Come back. So we got. All right. all right. So now we have. Now we have. Um, he sounds so lovable out there, doesn't he? He does. Well, he's, he's a lovable. That's, guy. that's the whole point. He just wow, kind of goes there. Here. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're number one on uh, cops' shit list. They're that they're, they're not talking about anything else except that uh, well, what yeah, cops are walking in. Yeah, I mean look, that was hysterical. I gotta be honest. If I'm gonna be partial over here, I think you overreacted. Yeah. I, it's it, yeah. it's a. It's I'm a, with it's, you, Josh. You know what? It's a combination of things. It's just, yeah. I just, I just and I. I kind of yeah. I just get it all the time from the guy, and I'm just done. I'm just <laughs> done. I'm done. I'm done with it. So. Um, Anyway, so the Collider Live is live. And again, once again, hashtag somebody's text like, the show. You know somebody's like, I forgot love. this was live until that fiasco yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah. You, you remember when like your dad and your brother would fight about something? Uh -huh. And you were like, I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I'm just going to go play outside. As the producer, <laughs> yeah. I was sitting there going... This is gonna this is gonna come around later. Yeah, yeah this is gonna be uh, yeah, this is gonna be do? something. But I just Listen. It, it's it's again that now we've we've already hashed it out on the air. Kind of not really hashed it out, but talked. Uh, Done something on the air, yeah. But like, we don't need to talk about it again. But uh, <laughs> that, that is the show. I would like to thank uh, Chris Weitz for coming on here today too. Tomorrow we're gonna have on um, Roca. Mm -hmm. uh, Roxy will be back. Roxy's I'm trying. Back. I'm trying to get Ken. Trying Come to and say it to my face, motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Trying to get Ken in here too, if we can. But um, I really want to get this. So I've teased this. Race to the altar. Yeah, it is it's a great idea. It is something mm. that's going to be interesting. Really good. And when you hear about it tomorrow, uh -huh. that's going to be the most fun. So for Josh McCuga and Mark Riley, rest of the crew here, um, I'm Christian Harlow. This has been Collider Live. We'll see you tomorrow. Remember, guys, hashtag Collider Live and chuck us out um, chuck every us. day. Chuck us out every day. Chuck us out. Monday through Wednesday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. PST. It's Collider Live.